Welcome to the planning board meeting for Monday, July 11th, 2016. Thank you to HCAM for recording this meeting. We're missing two members tonight, so uh, they'll need to look at uh, the tape and the video to uh, be able to vote on the uh, three public hearings that we have before us tonight. Uh, the first one will be uh, 151 Hayden Row. Uh, which is a special permit with uh, lots with historic structures. Then at 7.30, we're going to start the site plan review for the new elementary school, which will be a big thing, and that's half the paper that's in front of us right now. Uh, and then we continue on at 8.45 with uh, public hearings uh, for uh, Legacy Farms. So we have a very full agenda tonight. We've also got a bunch of other smaller stuff that we'd like to try to get through uh, tonight. So uh, let's uh, try to stay on the point and, uh, and we'll try to uh, get through tonight, make a lot of progress, hopefully. Okay, first one, and I assume that you want to continue even though we only have seven members tonight. Continue. Well, no, you want to okay. open? Proceed, yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the, we'll reopen the public hearing for 151 Hayden Row Street. Uh, lots of special permits with historic structures. Um, we have uh, one big issue I think is really re remaining with it, and, and that is uh, what we decide to do with a uh, historic restriction uh, on that uh, piece of property, and um, we have the uh, chairman for the historic commission here also. So why don't you join us up here and for the discussion because uh, it's going to be kind of critical. I think where we're at is in order for this to it, it qualifies on all the material aspects of what it has to be, there's been a letter, certificate from the Historic Commission, etc. But the real question that I think is before the board is what kind of restriction goes on to the property. Uh, this is really setting precedent in that it is the, the second one of these and I can imagine a lot of folks would, might want to be carving one and a half size lots or one and a half size frontages, you know, up and that's why I think the board members were interested in having some kind of histor his historic preservation restriction. Uh, the board also got a letter from uh, Claire Wright, our former member, who basically said, what good is it if you can tear it down in a certain time? And so uh, I the don't know whether we forwarded board that. I didn't receive that letter. I think just the chairman did. So okay. I didn't And we also received a version from Doug, but unfortunately your, your ver revision had a, uh, one of these wonderful uh, lawyer do not distribute all across the bottom of your email, so I, I don't. Didn't. Yeah, it had an um, attorney client privilege. Wasn't, in, wasn't, oh, that's a standard. I know, but we were nervous <clears throat> Okay. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, can yeah. I just speak sure. for a moment? Doug Resnick, yeah. Phil Tadaro. Phil owns the property at 151 under the name of uh, Waterfresh Farm, LLC. <clears throat> Two weeks ago, um, Ken and Jen and Mike were kind enough to meet with us and talk basically about the restriction. The restriction I had originally provided was one that would time out at some point unless renewed. Um, what uh, Ken and Jen seemed to say to us was that um, the store commission should decide what kind of restriction is okay. Um, I revised it to be more to be a perpetual restriction, and Mike had asked had suggested that what you know we don't want to create another historic district. We want to have a restriction that operates to protect the exterior of this house from demolition or serious renovation without the approval of the commission. So I redrafted what Jen had originally given us and we met with the, with some of the historic commission last uh, Thursday, 
Um, and the members that were there, I think, seemed um, to approve the redraft, which is now perpetual to address Claire's issue and really serves, I think, as a good template for the board in the future. There was no restriction um, applied the last time. This was, there were two other lots created. We are not changing one thing about the physical layout of the property. There's going to be Water Fresh Farm and there's going to be Phil and Donna's house. Mike? Um, so, uh, speaking uh, on behalf of the Historical Commission, which had an open public meeting without a quorum last Thursday. So I'm not, I'm not too clear exactly if I can, if I can say we, we reached a conclusion. What I can say is the discussion revolved around the following issues. A, the <coughs> Historical Commission's intent is to preserve the house, the historically significant house that's there. It's, it's, it's consistent with a lot of the mill houses in the town, and we think it is part of the character and fabric of, of the town. So our intent is to do whatever we can to preserve this house. We believe that the proponents recommending subdividing that property will help preserve that house, that we truly believe that. We, uh, the second point is that the historical commission wants that house to remain on that property. However, we don't need to be overseers of minor renovations. Of the, we don't need to replicate the historic district's governance over paint color, modifications, minor. All we want to do is make sure the house is there. The only question that came up after uh, Doug and, and Phil were there was, was um, if in fact this is a special permit and it allows this lot to be subdivided from the other lot, if for whatever reason the house is demolished, is there a way um, to not, by right, allow them to build the same size property? In other words, we don't want someone to take advantage of subdividing a property with an oversized uh, 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 FAR and take advantage of that by subsequently demolishing the property. So I don't know if there's a way uh, to say that, look, if in fact the house is demolished for whatever reason, you know, whether it's demo by neglect, whether it's fire, vandalism, if it is, if it's removed from the property, is there a way that that lot then would only be uh, capable of building a facility that fits the size of the lot? And I don't know if the proponents would accept that, but from our standpoint, it, that's the only concern that we have, is we just don't want someone to go ahead, use this clause, to preserve a historic property, and then whether them or subsequent buyers choose to try to um, circumvent the intent. <coughs> so we're I, 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 speaking for the historical commission. We we think this is a great opportunity. We'll see a lot more. I can tell you from the listserv I belong to, Mass Historic Listserv, the towns east of here have a tremendous pressure in terms of demo and, and rebuilds. Unbelievable. You guys know that probably better than I do. So I, I think this is a great opportunity for us to set a good precedent. The only issue is that we just want to make sure that going forward, it is for the intent that we envision. It's fine. Yeah, absolutely. It's fine. And we tried to write this thing for exactly that purpose. Mike had given us this guidance um, a week and a half ago, and we took it very seriously. Um, the idea, and Jen put this forth in her memo, is that the 81P plan that's going to be endorsed, the deed from Waterfresh LLC to Phil and Donna of the parcel on the plan, and the preservation restriction have to be recorded at the same time. And if everyone reviews this, you can see that there's a prohibition against demolition, there's a prohibition against any kind of substantial renovations or change. And that's what we were asked to do. I happen to think that this would be a good template for uh, the future when, when a, a similar application um, arises. Again, the one that's already been dealt with had really did separate off small frontage and so forth um, from the other lot, lots. 
um, we are doing nothing of the sort. We're just creating this lot, leaving Waterfresh Farm exactly as it is, and um, I think the restriction accomplishes what the Historical Commission asked us to do. And Jen's memo sort of says if we do this all at once, we'll be okay. And certainly nothing is allowed until this stuff is all on record, which we all would totally agree with. Okay. We have in front of us a, a, a marked up version of what it is. Jen, do you have any comments on this? Um, I, I have a question about why number 10 was removed, the notice of proposed sale. Oh, yes. And we discussed that at the Historical Commission meeting. There was a case several years ago, many, well, it's more than several now, where a town official was asked to comment upon a buildability zoning type issue um, and gave advice which was deemed by the owner, the then owner of the property, not the future owners, to have chilled his ability to sell the property. It was, it was, um, and the, the result was a significant judgment against the town. So all we're saying is we'd prefer not to have anybody, no offense, Jen, not you, not Ken, not anybody, other than the attorney who's going to have to, who's going to review the title, say what this means. And I, if part of it is in our own interest in being able to, um, and being able to deal with the property in the future, and part of it is genuinely in, um, along the lines of avoiding litigate possible litigation for the town and exposure to an enormous judgment. So my only objection to that is, you know, there's been situations where there's been, you know, deed restrictions for various things on properties that have been recorded in registries of deeds that People have not done their due diligence when they purchase the properties and then find out that things are attached to their deeds and then don't want to follow <laughs> what they are supposed to follow or then they I'm, and I'm not saying it will or won't happen in this case but I'm just trying to protect everybody at every angle well so that's, that's why if you put that in there that's just another layer of protection where you all, all we would do is just hand them this and say this is but that's if you want if you want it to be written that we would hand you this that's all I can live with that. I cannot live with any kind of discussions by anybody purporting to be a town official and expressing any opinions about the nature of the restriction. What if we wrote 10, like the grantor shall uh, make potential buyers aware of this restriction? Perfect. That's fine. That's fine. Something. Shall give a copy of the restriction. Grantor shall. Provide a copy of this restriction or this agreement. It's a restriction. At the time of signing purchase and sale? Sure. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Other than that, I think the changes, um, as I read them again this evening, probably fine. Um, the only one that is a little wishy-washy to me is number four standards for review, and I understand your concern about the Secretary of Interior standards for treatment of historical properties, and I understand, and I'm not saying that we need to go back to that, but the Commission shall be guided in its decisions by the goal of maintaining, protecting, and preserving the exterior of the premises in order to protect the architectural, cultural, and historical yeah. integrity thereof. That's what's in the bylaw. The yeah. question is, <laughs> Mike, Mike, do you guys understand what that paragraph means? Well, I, um, I, I, I think it's paraphrasing. I, I don't take exception. It could be rewritten um, to be a little bit stronger because if you look at the exact language of the bylaw, it uses not the word exterior but structure. Mm -hmm. So I would I would prefer to, that the word structure yep. um, fine. be inserted yeah. in there. A, a, the intent is is, makes sense. That's is fine. Yeah. the facility as a whole. Perfect, Mike. Thank um, you. Uh, yeah, Preserving the exterior 
structure. Cross that out and make structure. preserving the structure. Right. And the structure is, is more, in order to more protect. Yeah, 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 that's that's structure. Okay. okay. Makes sense. Other comments, questions from the public? I still don't understand, excuse me, the premise of breaking it away from the existing lot. Uh -huh. You have covenants here that will prevent any buyer from destroying the house, according to oh. what it says. Time. So it's irrelevant whether it's attached to the lot or not. Through, to through the it. chair. Yeah. The only protection that exists now for this house, Vincent, is if we were going to demolish the, the, the house for any reason, would be that we would be bound by Chapter 125 of the General Bylaws, where the Historical Commission would say again, this is historic structure, and there would, at most, there would be a six-month demolition delay. Correct. This prevents the structure from ever being demolished or changed. That's my point. And Once it's in perpetuity. It's in perpetuity. The structure now is combined with a business, Water Fresh Farm, Correct. LLC. They're all owned by the same thing. Phil and Donna were required to do that, okay, at a point after they had owned this property by, you know, on their own for many years. So all we're doing now is separating the house from the rest of the business, um, and with this restriction that will protect the structure of the house forever. But I'm saying with this restriction, you don't need to separate. You could sell the property oh, no, no. just as it is. With <laughs> we have other business. reasons that we absolutely need to separate it. That I've, it, we've explained previously. It has to do with the financing of the property and the ability of Phil and Donna to refinance free of the loan that's on um, the Waterfresh, uh, yeah, on Waterfresh LLC um, to refinance their own home um, separate from that financing. It's critical. Okay. Is there, through no, the chair? just the property was purchased as one parcel and now you want to break it away. Well, a, a large part of it's, a large part of it's been sold to the town already. I understand that, but that's, that was a whole different situation. Well, this is, this is now the opportunity right. to and sell a this property off. If you needed the cash, you could sell it off. And yes, we could, and subject and to this restriction. Correct. That would be perpetual. If I could speak as uh, as an uh, interested party, I, I, I think that from our perspective, we, we're concerned that if any third party were to purchase, that, that um, the house could be susceptible to being demolished. And, and Doug's right, you know, we, we have no more than a six month restriction. Currently. Currently. This agreement would change that. Yes, exactly. So we're <coughs> encouraging, we, you know, this is doing exactly what the Historical Commission wants to do not only here, but elsewhere in the town. So this is fostering our goals and objectives. So, um. for, for the chair, yeah. just, just wanted to say, I think it's a quick pro quo where you guys are getting the ability to split the house and business mm -hmm. separately, and we're getting the ability to put restrictions on the historic yeah. home. So I think. Mm -hmm. Which I is what the statute, the bylaw, provides. I mean, that's what I'm seeing, yeah. unless yep. I'm missing something. Uh, yeah, I think you're seeing it perfect. Well, quick question. You've got Selectman signing for this? Typically, the selectmen or the chief executive officer of the town, they would be required to sign any real property interest that the town would have, which this would be. Okay. So that's why. And I just, I agree. If I may, through the chair? Yeah, go ahead. This is a question for uh, our chair of the historic commission. Uh, in April, we discussed this, uh, and Mrs. Wright, or a selectman member, former uh, planning board member, uh, and a historical committee member, she noted that uh, she didn't think the bylaw was designed for this type of situation, and that's kind of the opposite of what you just said. Um, in reading from the minutes, uh, if the current wording does not prevent demolition of the property, special permit benefit, blah, 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 um, that's what we, we are putting that you in. You are correct in both statements. But Claire was the author of the original bylaw. It wasn't her intent to use it in this way. As okay. now the chairman of the historical commission, I, I don't I don't see where it's a conflict of interest to use the bylaw in this way. I, I think it does exactly what we want for this town, is to another opportunity to preserve a historic structure. It's as simple as that. That's it's a true. little bit different than what I think everyone that approved it when we did it. We might want to have Zachary look at that. I don't think this one is as grievous as somebody that might be trying to divide out. I'll say a 350-foot lot into two building lots 
you know. Mr. Chairman, just, just again for the rest of the board, um, <clears throat> there is on 112 Hayden Row, which is the first time the statute, the bylaw was employed, there is no restriction whatsoever with respect to the historic structure. I, I understand. And the quid pro quo so, is different. Yeah, we got, we got out of 14, 40 days. <clears throat> so in, in April. No, I, I, I agree. If I, if I may continue with my, um, in April we had pretty much an understanding that Mr. Todaro was open to keeping a restriction on the preservation of the home mm -hmm. and, and that is not to be demolished and things mm -hmm. like that. So we, we're not really going over new ground, um, maybe from a different angle now, I, I, don't, I don't know. But, um, but Claire did point out that the intent of the bylaw wasn't for this kind of situation. It was more for... Mr. Chairman, uh, that, that petition was withdrawn. Me me? That, excuse me. Mr. Chairman, the petition was withdrawn. Talk about the same we bylaw. have, yes, of course. I don't know what the bylaw was designed for. All I know is that we are we are proceeding exactly as provided in the yeah, bylaw. Right, okay, that's enough. We, we, we're, we're ready to vote, I think, or get, get going. One on here. quick question. Okay, go ahead. And this this falls under number three. You know, talk about some minor, um, you know, just the um, conditions about. Uh, doing any changes to the exterior and appearance of the house. Mm -hmm. there, from my understanding, you can make any changes without getting any approval from anybody. Oh, Does no. that mean that you can change the, co the color of the house? Maybe well, I'm misreading this. Well, minor, yeah, it's it's listed as minor. So, so well, they can paint it day glow they orange? Can, they can paint it day glow orange, absolutely. And, and you know what, the way we look at it, the historical commission is are they doing anything that's reversible? If it's reversible, God bless them. They want to paint it, they go orange until they're ready to leave. At least it's got a coat of paint on it. I, I know that's maybe a cavalier attitude, but, and, and I think if you look at the um, national, uh, the guidelines for preservation and terror standards, they talk about that as well. That if things are reversible, there's a lot more tolerance. If things are permanent, changes to a historic structure, that's an issue. But if, if, it's, if it's a paint color, if it's anything that's temporary, it's, it's not a concern of, of, of mine as the chairman. Mr. Chairman, historic. just briefly, I'm not even, we, we also submitted an appendix, which Jen, uh, uh, Exhibit C, which lists what is minor, and a wholesale change of color is not something we can just do on our own. We'd have to go to the commission, touching up paint, Fixing paint, fixing siding, fixing windows, fixing doors, okay. those are the things that are listed as minor. We'd still want to go before the commission before we painted it day glow orange. That's your favorite okay. color, right, Phil? Mr. Chairman, I have one question. Uh, earlier we said that uh, precedent, right? I just wonder what precedent are we setting here? I, th I think the, in general the, the, the precedent we're setting is that if you want to do this, you're going to get a historic preservation restriction, mm -hmm. period. So it's not a bad precedent at all. It's not a bad. No, I don't no, think no. it's a bad point. Okay. Well, I just want to yeah. articulate that because I think to your point, Mike, it's going to come up again. Yeah. Right. And I'd love to set a blueprint in place that makes it easy for everybody. Yeah. Francis, I would like a guideline for people that are going to develop properties to understand there's an opportunity. They don't just have to go out and quickly get a demo permit because in six months they want to start building, but which is what happens today because some I'm developers sure. just. They, they don't know what their options are, so they go ahead and go to the easiest options out there. Yep. Yeah. And that's all in the bylaw, too. So okay. I'm I'm good. Good. okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. To, in order to do this, uh, <coughs> page two of Jen's memo, we changed the uh, condition that's half in the middle of the page. It says prior to recording the 81P plan or within six months of the day this decision, whatever comes first. Uh, the historic preservation restriction on the exterior structure, that's the change, of the historic house uh, will be recorded. I'm also deleting the, as approved by the historic commission, because basically we're approving the memo tonight. Uh, and then no building or demolition permits shall be issued to the prior, historic home prior to recording the historic preservation restriction. So basically, if we're going to bring a vote here, we have to make the f following findings that the lot contains a historic structure and is situated in a lot for which an application has been submitted for approved, not required plan 
pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 41 and 481P, and the house will remain in its present location for that section. The lot is in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the zoning bylaw 210.117.2, Section 3. Uh, with the above condition and the historic preservation agreement. So basically, you'll find it, our finding is it's in harmony with the above condition and the historic preservation agreement. The board has given due consideration promoting the public health, safety, convenience, and welfare and the issuance of the special permit encourage the most appropriate use of land and does not permit a building or use that is injurious, no, noxious, offensive, or detrimental to the neighborhood. And so then, uh, basically, I'm looking for a motion to make those findings and, and include the, uh, the condition that we just talked about. So moved. Moved. Do second. I, I hear a second. Further discussion? Discussion. Yep. Again, I'm a big fan of Walker Fresh Farms. Uh, but this lot is too small. Uh, I would love to see this house be listed with the Historic Commission. Um, but I think the reason that it's being done is purely business-based. And I, I'm sorry, I don't think this lot is big enough to be separated this way. And then I'm thinking of the next owners down the line where the planning board were looking for the, out for the future. And I'm saying my comment now is that there is there is not enough parking, there's not enough frontage, and I, I when you say neighborhood, there's going to be a new neighbor there in some time in the future. And I don't want us to see uh, problems happen if we approve this now. Can I further discussion from members of the board? Mr. Chairman, just briefly. Frank, you, we've been blessed to have you serve on a number of committees. You don't make decisions based on how you feel and how you think and so Actually, forth. You have to have legally tenable reasons to vote for or against things. I think that I there is not enough frontage. Actually, half the half the homes between the high school and Chestnut Street have less acreage and less frontage. Well, we're looking at this lot, and I don't think it's a good idea to split it. Well, that's you do need six out of these seven votes here today. Um, and also, assuming in the, 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 the men memo was that the changes we made to the um, preservation agreement are, 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 are also assumed to be as part we of We would the have those to you tomorrow, Jim. Thank you. So, I think you're ready for a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. Nope. And anyone abstain? So I think it is uh, six to one. Two people not voting because they're not present. Okay, I uh, look for a motion to close the public hearing on 151 Hayden Road Street. So moved. Second. Moved and second. How, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. And thank Mr. You. Chairman, thank you very much, Board. Uh, we also have the 81P plan, the Mylar, and the application, and the check. Should we process with Jen? Thank you very much, folks. We're going to do it in the next? Unless you want to do it right now. I don't know. It's up to you. No, it's not next the meeting. We can go after Yeah, we have to stamp it in the town We'll do it at the next meeting. Okay. I'd come by tomorrow and if we, to Yeah, if we could do it short soon, that would be greatly appreciated. We have to deal with the weather. So it's two weeks. What? Uh, two weeks is the earliest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm on behalf of the historical Mikey. commission. Thank you very much. Thank you to do it after the public yeah. hearings, Jen. Well, we have to stand this up with town clerk. Okay, let's let's get the decision written, and then then we'll see if some of us will come to sign. Okay, we are just about ready to start at 7:30. While we're waiting for those guys to come in. Um, I'd like to um, approve the minutes for April 25th. Uh, any comments on the minutes for April 25th? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of April 25th. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. 
Uh, you guys ready for vote? Yes. Uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes for April 25th, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Uh, who's leading the uh, the school crowd today? Um, Mike. Mike. I need just quickly to set up a projector. Okay. While you're setting up a projector, we're going to continue to do a couple other minor things. Um, let's see. Yeah. Jen, it's, has it been determined that we don't need to appoint John to the Open Space Committee because his appointment lasts forever? <laughs> his appointment lasts for five years, and I just confirm with him that he will stay on for one more year to see how it goes, and then we'll revisit it next year. Thank you, John. Okay, thanks, so. John. Put it in perpetuity. <laughs> okay, then the other appointment is the uh, Planning Board representative to the Open Space Preservation Commission. No, to CPC. CPC. Or C CPC, I'm sorry. CPC. Uh, I'm currently serving on that. I'd be happy to do it again if you all decide to reappoint me. But uh, if anyone else has a great interest in it, uh, I'd be happy to, appoint, uh, to nominate the time to continue. Second. Further nominations? Seeing none, I think you're ready for, for the vote. All those in favor of reappointing me to the CPC committee? Say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstained? Motion carries. Okay. So we're still working on that. Let's see, we have appointments for the Design Review Board. Yes, they all um, have agreed to stay on if you so choose to have them. I think they're doing a great job on the Design Review Board, so... Uh, let's see. Including a new member. Prove that? <laughs> that that was that we already did. So basically, uh, this is for new terms that would expire the 31st of July, 2017. Uh, looking for a motion to approve uh, Ellen uh, Starter, uh, uh, Jeff Doherty, Jeanette Thompson, we uh, uh, McNamara as members and alternate members of Amy Radebush and Sean McGinnis. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further <coughs> discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. And thank you for the Design Review Board for your service. And whenever you're ready, uh, we have seven of our nine members here today. Okay. Uh, the two that are missing are going to be really good about watching the tape, so they, and they will be able to get around the vote when we get to the voting. Okay. So it's your choice if you want to continue tonight with, with only seven of us. We'll keep going. Good. Tonight. Yep. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to open the public uh, hearing. This is 129 Hayden Row. Uh, this is for the new elementary school building uh, site plan review for the town of Hopkinton. Uh, it's proposed construction of an elementary school and associated site improvements. Uh, All right. We, 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 uh, some, of you, some of you who are new to our plan, our site plan approval process, basically we created an outline for the hearing. Uh, I think Jen and I went over with, with uh, the building committee representatives about a week or so ago. So they're familiar with the process. Uh, this is a public hearing, and we will take public comment, uh, and lots of it. And the only thing we kind of ask in the process is that we try to stick kind of to the outline. So if we're talking about traffic, we don't want to talk about lighting. And we try to get from one spot to the next spot and, and, and reach a consensus so that at the back end of it, there should be no, uh, no doubt that we're, we're, we're moving towards an approval process. So basically, uh, during the detailed discussion, there will be plenty of time for the public to comment, and you're encouraged. 
to, to do so. Uh, you don't have to repeat it if somebody else has said it. Uh, and we ask that you give your name and address uh, so that uh, uh, we know who you are for the minutes. And uh, there's an awful lot of paperwork that was submitted with this, this plan. <coughs> We're probably not going to get it done tonight. Maybe we'll get it done the next night. I don't know, but uh, uh, it's a lot, of, lot. It's a big project for the town, and we respect that. And obviously, we're going to go through it in great detail. So, as we start our outline, basically, we're going to have a project introduction and kind of overview by the applicant. Great. Thank you, Mr. Oh, yes, sir. Chair. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. So I'm new to this whole process. Is there a way you could introduce yourselves or tell me like the players are? Oh, takes on this side of the board, it's the planning board. <laughs> okay. And on the other I'll side, it is, you can start that. Yeah, hi, thanks, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Joe Markey, uh, Chairman of the Elementary School Building Committee. Uh, our work started three and a half years ago. And uh, those of you who attend town meeting have seen us a few times. Uh, the project was funded last fall. Uh, we've had many meetings with uh, Parks and Rec. We saw you a couple times last year, uh, January, and then I think in May or June. Uh, so you've given us feedback and input along the way, and we appreciate that. Uh, our What you'll see tonight is a, a detailed design plan that remains very consistent to the schematic design that you saw last year, uh, and that we presented at town meeting in the fall. Um, it's a big project. We're, we're kind of going through permitting. We went through Conservation Commission. Uh, things were looking good, but we left that hearing open so that if, in case there's any feedback from Planning Board, we can bring that back to Conservation Commission later this month and hopefully close that hearing then to Design Review Board provided their feedback to you in the packet. Uh, were there any other permitting, Mike? No, no we're, 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 we're pretty much on schedule. Um, as, as Joe mentioned, we were at it's been three some odd years and, and umpteen public hearings and public meetings and, and uh, so we're just looking forward to get it before the planning board and um, yeah, I hope you'll be able to realize that there's a lot of work and a lot of thought that we presented. We have a very professional staff that's helping us and uh, hopefully it'll go fine. Yeah, so with that I just want to introduce our, our main consultants, Compass Project Management. Uh, Jeff D'Amico is our principal project manager for this project. He's been doing an outstanding job keeping track of all the details, keeping all the pieces uh, in the right direction. And uh, Jim Barrett is uh, from uh, Drummy Roseanne Anderson, DRA, our design partner. And Jim uh, has a, 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 a bunch of uh, sub-consultants working with the project as well. So I'll hand it over to Mr. Barrett, and he can introduce the, the team he's working with. Thanks, sure. Jim. Thank you, Joe, and uh, good evening to everybody. Uh, what we wanted to do, this is the uh, 10 to 15 minute overview uh, that we'd like to uh, take care of. What I'll introduce are those who will be uh, joining this evening in terms of this presentation. So this is a subset of our design team. It's listed as the project team, but it's a subset. Uh, Chelsea Christensen will be joining us from Niche Engineering. Uh, she'll address issues relative to civil issues, stormwater, etc. Uh, Nick Hobbin from Niche as well will address uh, traffic uh, issues. Uh, David Warner from Warner Larson. Uh, David will address landscape architecture issues as we go forward. Uh, joining me is Judd Christopher. He is our project manager uh, with DRA. I'm serving as principal in charge. Um, and uh, let's kick it off. David? I I'm sorry. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, as I asked before, I, the other part of my question was, what is the ultimate end goal or the purpose of coming in front of the, the planning board right now? Like, the objective is to get approval yes. or just knowledge of what's going on? No, and this, again, I, I this, apologize okay. to everybody for coming in late here. Okay. But this is a site plan approval public hearing, and at the end of this, the, the applicant will get approval to go build a school from, from the town. And, and I mean, that's, and, okay. and we do the same for every commercial building in town in, in the process of doing it for legacy farms, et cetera. Okay. So, Thank you. Yeah. So we'll kick yourself. off with the uh, site information. Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is David Warner with Warner Larson.
some landscape architects. And uh, this first slide shows the upper portion of the former Irvine parcel that the town recently acquired. And it also shows the southern portion of the EMC uh, park. King Grove Street is this road right here. And um, what we are showing on this plan is where the new driveway will be coming in off of Hayden Road Street. And uh, basically that leads up to the new building. This is a passenger uh, or car zone in here with a parking lot for parents to come in and park um, when they take their young children inside in the morning and also in the afternoon when they come to pick them up. The driveway continues past uh, that loop to come to the back in a counterclockwise loop for the buses. Buses can queue up all along in here while still cars can get to this parking lot. This is the staff parking lot on the east side of the building. We have service at the north end of the building and we have a play area out back and we also have a main entrance for the uh, parents here and the main entrance for children arriving by bus and also staff over there. Um, I just wanted to focus a little bit on this one before we go to the next slide. We're making a connection uh, all the way around the building for emergency access, but we're also making this connection to the existing parking lot at EMC Park. Um, and this is a uh, emergency access to the site, but it also will be able to serve pedestrians and bicycles. We have a, an emergency gate that will be closed down at this point. We also have another gate at this point, and this whole schoolyard in the back has a gate here so that anybody coming through the site um, will be prohibited from entering the schoolyard during school hours as something for the, uh, important for the function of this facility. The, um, the bordering vegetative wetland is outlined with blue with the uh, buffer zones offset from that, 50, 75, and 100 foot buffer zone, and the entry drive is coming in right in between these two wetland resource areas. So this zooms in now on just around the school so you can see it a little bit more clearly how the spaces are being created. This is the main entrance, one of the main entrances here, and then we have another main entrance over here as well, coming into the center part of the building. The pre-K, younger children uh, part of the building is on the south wing with its own dedicated and enclosed play area. We have the cafeteria, gymnasium facilities, along with the kitchen and service, like I mentioned before, all located on this wing, and the, um, the K-1 uh, wing of some classrooms comes out towards the west. We have um, some spaces directly outside of those classrooms that can be used as outdoor learning environments. We also have a play area out back for recess directly adjacent to the cafeteria um, with a structured play and open paved play area. This is all part of the emergency access route coming through the site. This is where the gate would be located to secure the back area. Um, and we also have a fence that is a privacy fence next to the service area here, but then it's a chain link fence that comes around this side here. Play lawn here that allows for youth soccer to also be able to take advantage of this new field. And then future expansion is also provided uh, for the classrooms uh, on the west end of the building. I'm Chelsea Christensen from Niche Engineering, Civil Engineer. Um, as mentioned, we're in the process of going through a notice of intent with the Conservation Commission protection of the wetlands. This plan here shows our mostly our erosion control, but really highlights some of our stormwater basins um, around the perimeter of the site. You can see the wetland buffer zones, um, especially through the access drive. Kind of we're, we're pretty constricted through the access drive as far as the buffer zones on both sides of us. The dark blue here are subsurface detention basins. This is a gravel wetland, which I can describe in detail later. And we have a bioretention area here for stormwater quality and storage, and also a, a few smaller basins right here. You don't really see the next slide. This is the overall site utility plan. Um, most of the the access road is providing a, a, a utility corridor for pretty much all of the utility services. The be below grade services coming up through this main corridor, serving the new school building, 
they've been um, sized to accommodate future expansion as well, so that we can accommodate whatever else happens on the other, the other <coughs> part of the site in the future, which is currently unknown. Uh, we have a, a water line looping through the site to provide uh, fire hydrants uh, around the entire site. Thank you for having me. I'm Nick Avon, traffic engineer. I, I, I have two slides over here with um, projected uh, drop off and a pickup. Um, our school, proposed school, is um, accessed through an intersection driveway here. It's a, a controlled by a, a fully actuated signal as, as part of the um, recommendations from beta. Um, we went ahead and changed it to fully actuated signal over here. And it has two, a left turn out and left uh, right turn out in a one lane approach. Uh, the way we, uh, as Dave mentioned, the drop off is gonna happen. The parents are gonna come here and drop off their children and, and, and they, they just leave. This is the morning AM uh, drop off. The buses are gonna use an upper parking lot. Uh, next slide. And then the pickup is, is more or less the same way. Um, the way it happens at the center school right now, uh, the parents come in ahead of time and they park and they wait for um, release of their children. So we have plenty of space in a, in a uh, parking lot here for the uh, to meet the parents' needs. The number of parents that we counted on our, our uh, uh, observation. Also, they can stack up along the curb and also they, there's a special left turn lane that can stack up up to seven or eight, I, I believe, cars over there in case the need comes up. And when they, they take their children, they can go up. Um, we, um, our analysis show that there's gonna be two car queue over there at the worst case scenario. That's the one. Sorry, can you show us the first one? The first one is going to have one card. Good? Sure. One, one, of the, one of the things when we talk about traffic a little bit more, uh, I'm maybe a more visual guy. Can, can you load up a plan with all the buses on it? How they all would stack up into that, around that corner? Maybe. I don't think we have one that shows the buses looping around there, but I believe we can accommodate. We David, how many can we accommodate? You don't have to. You don't have to make it pretty. Just a, a solid line, yeah. the length of a bus. Yellow line. You know, you just don't have that diagram tonight. But you yeah. know, the well, we won't, uh, this is not David, how many tonight. can it queue along there? Well, we've designed this based on the first uh, bus stopping here and the last bus stopping back here, so that there's the. Um, ability for staff to come and go without obstructing. Okay. Well, that's that's obstructing. kind of what I want to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah drop off a of full complement of buses going to this. School. So, like 25 buses? Yeah, but yeah, they come staggered. Waves. They come two staggered waves. in two yeah. different two ways. Waves. So, so 12 at, at, at the most at one time. Okay. Well, then. Well, right now we have 24 buses that serve the central school. Okay. okay. Right. Uh, in two waves. In two waves. I think it's enough to. If you can demonstrate. demonstrate. Okay. I'm curious. Well, this is not how to ask no, questions. No, no, no. We'll, we'll get into the detail. I just. Good? Yeah. You're yep. good. <laughs> so, lastly, we just want to quickly share with you some of the uh, architectural detailing of the building and just as a, a broad overview. So, the dark blue areas are those areas that are classroom or kind of core areas of building. Uh, the pink area that's shown here is predominantly administration. There's a separate, this is the pre-K entrance. It has its own administration associated with that entrance point to the facility. And everything from this point back becomes the major public portions of the building. That includes the cafetorium and the gymnasium uh, portions of the building. These can be easily segregated and opened at off hours if necessary for public use. 
uh, this is the upper level, and it basically parallels what you have seen below. The majority of the activity on the upper level is classroom usage. Uh, there is a library located in this zone on the, on the plan. Uh, at this point, I just want to quickly uh, jump over to a uh, computer model to share uh, a general overview of the building. Um, this is an aerial view. You'll never see this in real life unless you're a balloonist. Uh, but coming down to uh, to grade level, uh, a sense of the uh, of the uh, organization of the building. This is that drop off main entrance point to the facility. Uh, a sense of the uh, organization of the building, the plaza that's associated with that main entrance point. Uh, as we come down the wing, this is that classroom wing of the portion of the building. This is one of the outdoor classroom spaces that uh, David touched on in the landscape component. Um, so this entire wing of the building is classroom usage. As we come around to the back of the facility, uh, this is the greenfield play area, the hardscape play area, the <coughs> structured play area, and then back entrance to the cafetorium. Um, it gives you a sense of the transparency through the main lobby space uh, out into it, uh, a view basically at the neck of that connector walkway uh, pathway to EMC Park. Uh, coming over to the bus drop-off uh, wing, this is the gymnasium, the bus entrance point. Basically, this area of the building at the first floor serves as the connector for both that front entrance and the bus drop-off entrance. Students arrive at the same knuckle point within the facility. Uh, this is that pre-K area, its own dedicated entrance point, doorway, and play area. Uh, due to the age group's uh, separate playscape than that of the older children. Uh, and then back out to an aerial overview. So there's a quick snapshot of the organization of the building. Uh, that's what we have to share. Uh, Jim? Yes, sir. Last time you were here, we had a green roof. It looks like we lost the green roof in the process. Or? Yeah, you mean uh, in terms of the vegetated roof yes. at the lower area. That is correct. OK. <clears throat> yep. So that's our overview. That's the overview. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now I guess next, uh, uh, Principal Planner, Jennifer, uh, sure. why don't you give some comments? Um, so I don't have many comments. Um, I reviewed um, the plans briefly, and then I went away, and then when I came back today, um, I reviewed them again, and along with Beta's memo, and so in front of you tonight, there was a sort of update to my memo with some additional items that I feel need to be addressed that were either zoning items or site plan standards that I feel are not being met. Um, so I have more copies for the team too, but I can't reach them right now, so I'll get them to you in a minute. Um, so those are just um, some items that I think we should go over when we get to the waiver issue. Um, we did, um, it's the uh, back Joe, it's the that goes, I believe. Or, yeah, sure. Um, we did get comments from Board of Health and Design Review Board. Um, CONCOM is rescheduled, I believe, for the 25th. Um, so they're moving forward. Um, other than that, um, I don't have a lot of other comments at this time. When we get to the waiver request, I may have some additional comments to go with that. Okay. Any questions for Jennifer? Okay, we're moving right along, which is good. Uh, next, uh, Beta folks, who wants to give some overview of comments? We'll, we'll get to all the detailed ones, but it's just kind of an overview. Right, that's fine. Sure. Is there anything in particular you want to focus on, or just run through the? Why don't you just run through in general? In general. All right. Five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, as was mentioned, we've also reviewed this for uh, conservation, so I won't uh, necessarily go through any of those comments, but uh, we've been working with the consultants to um, address the comments we've made during that process. Um, <coughs> so 
some of the uh, or bigger comments are the 50-foot uh, buffer that's required in the residence B. Uh, they have one segment where they're only providing a 20-foot, 25-foot buffer. Uh, we had suggested some additional screening might be uh, helpful in that area. Um, the landscape requirements for um, a parking lot, we had outlined some areas where they uh, could provide some additional plantings and also asked that uh, they clarify how the 10% interior landscaping had been addressed. Um, they have provided landscaping at the uh, Islands basically from the ends of the parking areas. Just want to see how the 10% uh, criteria applies. Um, we're looking for a little bit of additional uh, screening from some of the dumpster and mechanical areas. Uh, there's a, a backup generator they've shown. Um, we had questioned what the fuel source for that was and where the storage tanks would be, and uh, wanted to consider some additional screening around the generator. Also asked to clarify the extent to which the sidewalks were proposed on Hayden Row. Uh, in terms of site lighting, it looked like um, there was a, a fair number of que questions about the site lighting, um, particularly the uh, photometrics were uh, difficult to follow in some spots. Uh, so we looked for some clarification on that. And once uh, noted that they looked like pole heights, as pro currently proposed, exceed the town standard. Um, and we're also wondering if it would be uh, security lighting or any, any use of motion sensors for, uh, for security. Um, just wanted to confirm in terms of emergency access that Hawkerton Fire and Police had reviewed their access and were happy with. Uh, what was provided just to close that loop. Um, another thing that we commented that would help be helpful in terms of the review was we had noted there were several areas which appear to need a waiver. Uh, oftentimes the applicants provide an actual waiver list. Uh, we did not see that in the package. That could be, it just makes everything a little easier for everybody to follow. Uh, we also noted that there's uh, a lot of porous pavement being pr proposed, and uh, porous pavement by its nature is sometimes difficult to maintain, requires it to be uh, vacuumed uh, pretty much on a yearly basis. Uh, we just wanted to make sure the town was aware of that and was uh, accepting of the maintenance requirements. had several planned comments that were, a lot of them were just clarifications on uh, light pole locations and locations of some of the, uh, the berms and roof drains. Uh, we'll get through all that nitty gritty. Uh, we also had a couple comments for some constr additional construction details we'd like to see to provide some clarifications on the, uh, the intent. Skimming to skip over the get the highlights. Uh, in terms of traffic, um, we we're looking for additional crash data um, just to uh, confirm the hazard of that area. And also looking for some additional information on um, the number of school students who walk. Additional information on the, uh, the time at which the counts were taking and suggesting some additional days. And also um, notice the discrepancy between the existing uh, drop off and pickup volumes. I'm just curious as uh, why there was a difference there. Those are the highlights. I, I think there was quite a lot of traffic comments, and uh, if you're all right with that, Mr. Chair, I'm going to 
defer on those for the moment because our traffic engineer would probably be better to, to speak to those, and I think you'll probably get to the traffic more in more detail later. Okay. If I may, for the chair? Yeah, go ahead. Just a quick explanation. Uh, this is our engineer that town hires to review what we're seeing, and, and he has professional okay. questions okay. independent of the project. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, what you should be, if hopefully there's still copies left, there's an outline. We've been kind of following the outline. Um, <laughs> I've, I've been making changes to it as I'm listening to people so far. We're on item number four, which is where planning board members and the public can add to the outline. This is kind of like a brainstorming session. And so all we want to do is get it on the outline. We're going to, we're going to talk about anything that you want to talk about, but we want to get it to the outline so that, number one, they're prepared the next meeting or whenever we get to it, and two, we don't forget about that important comment or that important subject. So that's kind of why we kind of put the outline. Uh, Jennifer and myself worked on the initial draft of the outline, uh, but we missed a lot of things because we always miss a lot of things because we don't have all the information. So a lot of that information might come from citizens that are around here that have questions, and we will be happy to talk about them. So right now we're going to add to the outline um, some of the things that I heard for changes to the outline. On 5B, in relationship to neighboring homes and property, there's a buffer requirement that I believe we heard. Uh, sidewalks under traffic. Uh, D will be item 7. Uh, parking lot, the landscaping 10% requirement as a key item. Under lighting, which is G, add an item 4, pole heights. And we'll expand the screening for the dumpster to include the generator. And landscaping also uh, kind of the buffer, which is K. Uh, electricity. You didn't hear that here, but... Okay, I'm sorry, what was K? What did you add to K? Uh, K, just to add the buffer supplement. Uh, utilities, basically, for when I went through the, the uh, plans, there's a couple of new poles on the road. We would like to talk about those. Cause, uh, the, and then I'm going to add one S at the bottom, which will be beta comments regarding the details. So if we get down to the last of all the detailed discussion, if beta still got something left, and hopefully through this process, the engineers work with our town engineers, and, and that list gets smaller and smaller every every time uh, we get through this type of thing. So uh, now, I'll entertain additional comments from members of the board, or, or additions to the outline. Frank. Uh, a discussion about the green roof. Okay, let's see. How about under building. under building design? Okay, thank you. Hey, Mr. Chairman, if I might, I, I believe I may have skipped one <coughs> by mistake. Okay. Uh, the maximum height in this uh, zoning district is 35 feet. Got it. Let's put that under building design. Yep. Max height. We're going to hit all these ones that are wavered, and I think that's on our list. Mm -hmm. so, um, okay, John. I hate to bring this up, but it's the time of, it's the era we live in, and I've done quite a bit of reading on active shooter situations, and I'd like to see a active shooter safety plan, roadways in and out, be able to get buses out, be able to get emergency vehicles in two ways. And in the discussions on that, the lack of a traffic safety plan to be implemented in that case caused problems with emergency vehicles. So I'd like to see at least an outline of a traffic safety plan and how the physical structure relates to that safety plan. Okay, why don't we expand fire and we'll make it fire and police safety and we'll add a Another outline called active shooter planning. Sadly. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments from the board members? Anyone from the public I have one, I oh, one, oh, Mr. Friend, Mr. Go ahead. 
Uh, number 5F, EMC parking interconnection. Yep. Uh, I'd like to understand what does that process look like? Um, you know, they talk about having access to 95 additional parking spots. A lot of those spots during the school day are taken. The high school kids use up a lot of those spots. So just be cognizant of that. And then in the springtime, you've got little league games going on, and that parking lot is packed. So for evening type of events, I'd like to think who opens up those gates? How is that? Please go understand that a little bit better. So with the Okay. To the chair. Yep. I think that also ties in with the active shoot because that would be the second means of egress. So maybe tie that all in together. Yeah. Sure. Okay. We, we, we're talking a lot about how we get between the two and how it all fits together. Other other items. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Chairman, Jay. I have a concern about decibel levels generated from the HVAC equipment. Uh, we can we'll bring that up as uh, roof. We got roof HVAC units and noise. Thank you. Okay, I thought I saw Jane's hand up there. Uh, I'm Jane Moran, chairman of the Upper Charles Trail Committee, and um, we've been working with um, the school committee and this planning board to develop some trails that will access through. <coughs> The new school property, and I didn't have that mentioned. I'm just wondering. Okay, we got that in two C two. We'll okay. talk about trails. <laughs> that one I anticipated. <laughs> okay, other comments, questions, particularly neighbors and the butters. Yes, sir. So I haven't introduced myself. I'm Dave DeStefano. I live right across from the entrance of 134. Okay. Um, so one thing I, I we talked about lighting the parking lot, but Specifically, the residual lighting for after hours would, would be something that would be interesting, right? Whether it's security or. Yeah, it's on there. 5G. 5G. Okay. 5G. We've got, yeah, we've got, we've got that, but let's, let's also add. Um, after hours. Uh, let's, let's talk about lights and headlights at his intersection. Just so. Uh, that out of the traffic, though, if it's headlights? Uh, let's, no, let's call it under landscaping. Uh, lighting, lights on neighbors or something like that. Car lights. Okay. We got, okay. Those are all good items. I have a question. Uh, you mentioned the traffic light at the entrance to the school. Uh, can you put on the outline the location of that light? There are several streets in between Chestnut and that light that when the traffic queues up in the morning, they won't be able to pull out of their street. Absolutely. Okay. They'll block the entire street until the light turns green, and then they're not going to get it. So okay. Yeah. Why don't we... Why don't we add it into the traffic area? We'll just put traffic light as a... A separate item. Maybe, maybe it'll be in paragraph three, and then we'll just move the other ones on down. Okay, other items. Okay, it looks like we're doing well to get going, and we're we've got about 35 minutes left that we've got scheduled tonight, and the first item. I'm going to, if I don't, I, I'm not seeing any more additions to the outline, so we'll call that one item four closed. And we're now into the detailed discussion phase. And we're going to just try to work right down the outline. Go we'll get another one published for the next meeting with check marks as to where we're at. Uh, that isn't to say we, we're, we're going to try to get to a consensus on each item. And then unless somebody has an awful lot of very important new information, we try not to go back to it. So basically the first item that we had on the detailed discussion was waiver requests. Uh, I'm going to start the discussion a little bit in that the waiver requests are, are basically to the site plan standards that we have to judge this. And these standards are attached to the back of the outline and they go from A to R. And all these standards have been approved by town meeting and all the people in town. And these are the standards that 
we believe that our commercial and public buildings should be built to. And so to see nine waivers to these standards of less than 26, I will admit that's the first time I've seen this many in my nine years on the planning board. So we grant some of these type of things okay. occasionally. To be fair, only five of them are to the actual site plan standards. There's oh. a couple to other items. Okay. Okay, and I think we um, we had some questions on one of them. Okay. Do you, you want to, could, uh, could maybe DRA run through the list of the waiver requests? Would that help? Sure. We're, we're, we're right now we're going to go through it and we'll talk, we'll go right down Jen's list. And, and this will be kind of the preliminary review. We might touch on these a little bit later in the detailed discussion, but I want people to kind of get a feeling as to where we are on waivers because at the next meeting, one of the ways to solve those is to do minor redesign to, to go f maybe not require one or, or to come up with the information that would be persuasive that the town standards need to be waived. So let's go down through Jen's list of, of uh, items. I think the first one was uh, maximum height of 35 feet. I don't remember seeing a, a plan that showed dimensionally what it was. No, I believe Beta scaled it at 38 feet. Now the plan states that the building height will be 28 feet. But, and when you look at the uh, elevations, they, they label the main building at 28 feet, but they do not mention the mechanical spaces on the top or the atrium. Uh, by scale, it looked to be about 38 foot. Well, to the top of the hip roof over the lobby that is 38 feet but from the regulations it says that you take the mean height of the eave to the ridge which would be the average of that height so it's 28 at the bottom it's 38 at the top so that average height would put us at 33 feet um, we ha we have not done building calculations to uh, rooftop units okay rooftop units I think can are included, I believe. Yeah, I don't believe it. It doesn't say you know, in the regulations. So, but let's say we're going to talk about that in the past. The action item is to kind of tell us what those numbers are and come back with what what you think the numbers are. So we had it at 33, which is why we didn't list it as a waiver request. Correct. Maybe maybe you can write a paragraph or two as to why you believe sure. that that works. Um, the second one is a 50-foot wide buffer in uh, waiving the buffer requirement. I guess is the action item. I think we want to maybe a, a map that just shows where that 50-foot are. Maybe t you can go, yep. you can go that. Up. And the reason we want a map is if we're going to wave it, we're going to wave it in that in that area only, and we'll have to also determine. So where does the 50 foot get waved? Go to the next slide, Jen. There you go. Highlight it. Sure. Um, so the areas where we're less than 50 feet are uh, for the landscape buffer in these areas right here, as well as. Yes, but the gravel wetland is vegetated, so. Right. So the 50-foot the landscape buffer you're by your um, site plan standards are intended to maintain <coughs> and protect existing tree vegetation. We have to clear uh, some of the trees in there to construct the project, and those areas are being revegetated. Um, I think that your consultant did recommend uh, that those revegetated areas uh, incorporate some more woody saplings and that type of thing to accelerate succession. I think that's a, a good suggestion. We'd like to accommodate that, um, but we still, I think, need the waiver in order to be able to clear trees in that area to work this project. Okay, let's let's just quick if, 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 let's just discuss it just a little bit right in here. If you're going to the one that you're just we're pointing at, if, if I remember from the picture. The wetland goes into that, so that lot, which we don't own, is non-buildable? 
Is that, that's is, that, that, is, that, is, is that a... This, this is the Boru Vegetative Wetland Line, yes, Mr. Chairman. And so this is the wetland area. These are the buffer zones associated with that. So, so yes, the majority of that site is all wetlands. So, so... So in and itself acts as a buffer zone, even though we're encroaching closer to that other cars along. And, and there, are, there are no houses on that in that section right now. No. And who owns that, Mike? Do you remember? I'm not sure. Okay. And then, if you go to the buffer up on the top section. Yes. So these right. areas in here, we're clearing in order to be able to construct the yeah. bus driveway. There is a fill in this area slope down that shows in the grading plan that would be revegetated. So this lighter green area would be new vegetation on a fill slope facing in an easterly direction. We have, are um, keeping a 25 foot um, uh, buffer zone of existing trees in that area. But within the 25 to 50 we have to clear and fill uh, and then revegetate. Okay, and if, if, if I go clockwise, the first little triangular piece up there, right next to the, that, yeah, right there, that's one of the lots owned by the Abbott Realty Trust. The second one is also owned by Abbott Realty Trust, I believe, as is the third one you're seeing down there. And those three lots that I just talked about, the, the roadway that is, uh, I think it's unbuilt Myrtle Way, has been encroached by lots of water, and those three lots are on a p potential plan that, that might be able to be built. So uh, those three lots are potentially, if the town was to grant them sewer probably. If I go down to the next one, which is that one there, that one is unlikely to be built because it is, other than the corner you're showing, the rest of it is well within the 100 foot buffer on the wetland. Uh, that, that would not be built. Uh, no way they can build on that lot. And then the next lot, the big lot down there, which is one of the uh, Irvine uh, properties, Unfortunately, their lot, the roadway that was to connect to that through that other other intersection, is completely underwater at this point. So that that lot is stranded out at this point. I don't think it can be built on either. So I just wanted the board members to kind of think about that as the lot in front is owned by Botka, B O T K A. It's the okay. last name. Okay. So to that point, Mr. Chairman, those three lots that you talked about potentially that could be built upon the top, what would be their access to any main road? Uh, it would be a new cul de sac road? off of off of uh, Blueberry. Yeah. Okay. Is right. that Blueberry right there? Yeah, that, uh, yeah Blueberry, Blueberry is the houses up there. Okay. So what I'm saying is that that T that T intersection in the middle is kind of right there is all wet. And so they would be putting a cul-de-sac uh, in that area. So Why is it shaped like that? Is that proposed road, or uh, that's the that's what the subdivision, the planning board approved in probably about '95-ish or something like that, uh, when that was subdivided. And since then, it's gotten a lot more wet, I guess. And I know none of those lots are buildable without town sewer. And maybe one or two are, potentially. And the town has not granted the developer sewer in that area. So I guess just to summarize on the, the waiver request for the, the buffer, we're, we're asking it because we might have to take trees down between 25 and 50 feet, but the intention is to replant there. Okay. Yeah. In general, if I may, through the yeah. chair, yeah. Uh, the Conservation Commission has looked at this, and you guys have an open session with them, and 
I'd like can you summarize conservation because we went through conservation for one step and now we're going through NOI. Yeah, right? and that's the next step. And, and um, the, the agency of conservation has the working the engineer for that is Peter as well. Yeah, and yeah, they're, they're communicating with our engineers, Mitch, and hopefully they'll work out whatever issues there are. I understand they're not major. Right. Because this question is right now and they'll be yeah. worked out. So the effort is to make sure everybody's on the same page. And if you were maybe putting a trail in around the road that wasn't using the road as an access, maybe in that 25 to 50 feet is, is the spot where the trail would have to go if you wanted to connect EMC Park with the southern part of that section. Yeah. So it would be kind of cleared, maybe you just don't plant quite as many trails. Well, and, and, and our buffer bylaw allows for bike and pedestrian trails within that 50 foot buffer. So, <laughs> okay, let's, let's... If you just so, want to go back to the first one real quick, it does say that chimneys, spikes, towers, and other projections not used for human occupancy may be constructed above the foregoing height limitations upon grant of a special permit by the Board of Appeals. Okay. So you can, they can construct those higher than 35 feet, but they have to get a special permit from the Board of Appeals. And I would say the other of that would include the air conditioning units if that is the case. Correct. Okay. Uh, we can't necessarily waive that correct. requirement. Okay. Um, and I think the action item on the 50 foot is just to give us a, a plan that shows exactly where you're requesting the, the waiver request. Okay. We'll just go, go we'll briefly go through the, the next one. Uh, is 10% of interior parking lot having 25 or more spaces must be with landscaping including trees etc uh, just about everyone hates this that comes before us because they lose parking spaces because of it uh, but we did pass that in town meeting four or five years ago because we thought it was the green thing to do and uh, that might be one that you guys have to go relook at that or figure out how to convince our friends at Beta how you do the math to, to, to get that to pass. If we could ask Warner Larson, he'll ready to explain that. Okay. So if you look at the parking lot, this is right, um, four edges here, 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 here. Um, the square footage of this is uh, such that it would require about a 50 foot by 50 foot area of green space within that parking lot. Maybe broken up in a couple of different islands. That would eliminate 12 parking spaces in this lot. Um, so that's just simple math. Um, I think it would be our uh, request to consider um, the definition of the parking lot as using the surrounding areas as well. Um, I don't know if your, um, your regulations allow that level of interpretation, but for instance, like this is a very large green space here and the areas around the loop here that we've been able to maintain by um, really giving the parking lot um, a landscape setting so that it's got substantial buffer, both aesthetically and environmentally. Uh, as you approach the school, your first impression of the facility is not a sea of cars because this is mounted up, planted, and it is a landscape buffer. Um, and uh, you know, around the back here, just due to the nature of the turning movements of large apparatus like buses, we have substantial islands that I believe are about 25 feet across here. Um, so the driveways and the parking lots themselves considered, we can run a calculation on that, I, I haven't, but whether or not these areas count for 10%, um, like that, um, as the top of that is one suggestion, as a way of avoiding the need for a waiver. Mr. Chair. What I remember through the chair, yeah. um, when we passed this, was to try to avoid the large massing of asphalt, which is going to create extensive heat. It also, by putting trees and vegetation inside the parking lot, provides shade for some of the cars. So it, it reduces the amount of heat put off and absorbed, and uh, also providing shade. Okay. 
Well, Mr. Chair, one comment I want to make. Can you just double check on the width of that 20, what you're calling 25 feet? Because to me, it looks like about the same length as a parking space, which is probably about 10 feet. The depth of the parking space? Yeah, you're saying the green right there is 25 feet? And that's that's some question in that. I can, I can double check that. Right? Yeah. Why don't, why don't we leave this depth one as an 18 feet. The width would be 10 feet. The depth of the space is 18. Okay. That's why it looks why don't, why don't we leave this as an action item to, to try to convince Beta as to how the calculation should be uh, considered and, and try to work on that. Okay. And let, you, let the engineers talk to each other and, and try to figure out kind of what what makes the basis of the calculations and, and what what can be maybe done to, to do that. The, the, the heat sink issue we talked about with our, our own meetings. Uh, as well as the need for the parking spaces. But <clears throat> we also talked about snow removal. We just, we just happen to live in Massachusetts. And, and the islands, while well, they're nice, and, and we'll do all those things, cut down the hot tub, and they, they make it miserable to take the snow away. Um, so that was an issue as well for us. Uh, uh, and and, and, and you're not alone. Everyone that comes on that side of the table has the same comments, yeah, and, 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 and we enforce them equally so, as bad. I mean, it, uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, if yeah. we haven't already discussed uh, where we're going to put that, can we put that with the uh, stormwater management? Uh, storm removal? Removal? I was just going to bring up the same point. I don't see it on here, and I just, Mr. Shepard brought up a good point about storm removal, and I'd like to have, make sure we discuss that. Okay, we'll add snow removal to the. Thank you. Just talk about Okay, okay that'll, that'll kind of go somewhere in there. Okay, uh, let's let's try to get through all this list of waivers at least at the top level, so that because that's that's the hardest part for us. Uh, let's see. I think the next one, all utilities are underground. I think there's two utility poles that are within the scope of the project. We are. If you read the paper, we took Mr. McDowell to task on just two poles. And uh, I suspect that we. Through you, Mr. Chair, yeah. I think this is a relocation, not a new pole being added, which is a different issue. If it's the same number of poles, I have no problem, but I, I'm not sure. I didn't look at it. Was it? There's a net one? There's a net one. Yeah. Net one? I think there was a new one that they had to bring the power to just inside the. That inside that the site that then would go underground. That and that's exactly right. what Mr. McDowell had a problem right. so with this board you, for. Do you have some expertise or yeah. advice for us on yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah, it won't Don't. be allowed. <laughs> 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 I, I, uh, from my reading the paper, though, there, so what's our action to follow back up with uh, the utility? Yeah. yeah, we have a meeting scheduled with the utility, so we can discuss it. Okay. And I'll give you guys the news article. Feel free to ask Mr. McDowell how yeah. we got that taken yeah. care of. In two weeks. <laughs> okay. Uh, mechanical equipment, other utility on the equipment on the roof, et cetera, will be screened from view of the ground. Uh, so I'm sorry, we able to ask questions now about the electric poles? And so I think right now, again, I'm not an expert, you guys have done all the measurements. Isn't there a pole right in the middle of the driveway right now? I think yes. that's I think that's one that has to be relocated. Yeah. So they'll be able to move that without adding another one? Is that or they, they would think they want to add another one to bring it in further, which we highly discourage. We don't want any new poles into the property. Relo we're relocating we're, we're we're not it's not our purpose to make all the wires go underground on Hayden Road Street. I mean, unfortunately we're living with those. Uh, but Particularly if, if you're building the road to subdivision standards, that pole wouldn't be allowed to go over overhead. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Can I expand on that? Uh, I went to David Park. At 134 and 136 feet, and we're going to need to be refed um, the main house power supply due to that shift at all? It's the same as that. We'll, we'll talk more about the poles that are when it comes up on the outline. But we'll, okay. okay. I, no. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's okay. I. It's, it's, this is kind of a, a preliminary go through the waiver list today, you know, and 
that isn't to say that minds can be changed, but you know, this is the initial read of, of, of things. Uh, screening of mechanical equipment on the roof. We get a lot of pushback on mechanical equipment on the roof, and at a minimum, we're going to need cut sheets of what that stuff is going to look like, because to me, it's prominent in in the view. Uh, the town went nuts when the flying saucers went on Kalola's roof first, uh, and you know we've had that bylaw in there, and we've enforced it, I think, on everyone ever since for every site plan review. We will be prepared to talk about that at the next meeting, but you'll you'll quickly see that if you're encapsulating all of these mechanical units, they'll be much more offensive in the size and complexity and height of them in order to screen the units behind them. The units used today are a lot more aesthetically pleasing than they were with the older units that are out there. Well, we can provide you with cut sheets, but at the end of the or, day, or this photographs, is still, something. It's still yeah. a public mm -hmm. process, so they're, they're allowed to or equals in mass general law, so we'll, as much as possible, uh, you know, manage that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, on that screening, does the screening provide additional sound attenuation? Was it 130? Come on, come on in. <laughs> one Piper The screening probably does do some, but it's really not usually designed for that. It all depends on what the person puts up. A lot of times, it's an aesthetic. You know, you'll see the little rail fence that's on Hopkinton Drug. You'll see the. You'll see Koalas, which quite frankly, does not look <laughs> much better. But you see the same same screening on um, all the insurance folks over on uh, Liberty, Mutual. Liberty Mutual, and, and it looks great. I mean, and, you know, you'll see in a lot of the South Street buildings that have been built in the last 10, 15 years. My comments only come from the high school, which is quite loud. Okay. Okay, you know, we'll talk about that in a lot more detail here. Dumpsters. It took me five years on the planning board to get the dumpster behind this building screened. Uh, you're going to have a hard pressed time getting my, my vote for a non screen dumpster. So, uh, that's, and that's a subject that I think I understand, but that's just me. But, uh, we, we, we required it on everyone that we've done in the last nine yeah, years. Mr. Chairman, I think you're going through this, so we, you're obviously it's a standard, and we've submitted a waiver, so you're rearticulating that that's the standard so that we can explain why we're applying yep. for a waiver, right? Correct. Okay. Yep. So yeah. well, we're going to talk about these in great detail yep. when but we get down the outline. Yeah, but I'd like to at least make a quick statement on the justification submitted with the waiver. From uh, DRA or their Lawrence. So um, the dumpster would be located in the service area at the back of the building, and it's tucked in behind this piece of the building where the kitchen is, and so it would be located here, and it's also behind the play area, which will have a wood screen fence along here. So it's effectively screened from the front of the building and from the back. It's visible for uh, to passerbys. So we're coming along this this uh, service access road here, um, and we found that um, oftentimes with school facilities, when you put gates on it to screen it fully, enclose it and screen it, that those become the first things to break, become dysfunctional. Um, so um, you know, we, we look for ways to integrate the dumpster within um, a screen environment without necessarily having to gate it off. And I think that in the long term, operational of this facility, uh, we're, we're not wanting to put gates on it if you don't have to. We haven't been too flexible with any of the businesses around on that subject. We understand the problem. It's just we're not, just historically, the board hasn't been flexible on that. Uh, sidewalks on the frontage of the lot, I'm not sure. We're going to talk about sidewalks in a greater context. I'm not sure whether putting a sidewalk along the, the two pieces that are currently owned here does a lot in the short term. I think if you were doing all of Hayden Row, 
which is not part of this project, it might make a lot of sense to do that. So, Through you, Mr. Chair, yeah. would they be responsible for the entire length on Hayden Row of the property length there? Historically, we've only required it. It would be voluntarily if it was anything other than their their property. And we we should have a more detailed discussion on the sidewalks because we, we've got it on the general we, of where yes, we're going to put sidewalks with the next funding of right. sidewalks. Yeah, we we appeared for the planning board well over a year ago, and, and we requested the planning board help us to get DBW because they're the ones trying to figure out where all the sidewalks should go. Yeah, and we okay. thought this should be a higher priority. Correct, but is there some kind of study that says how far we should be going with sidewalks? Yeah, ideally? Back about a year ago when we brought this up with the uh, with, uh, with Elaine Lazarus, the belief at that time was that the town had prioritized the stretch of the Hayden Row from EMC Park to the new proposed school driveway on the east side of Hayden Row as a priority for the town in the funding that was already I would I would like sidewalks. to see some a write-up on this about how far children need to walk to school and whether there should be sidewalks at that distance. Now, how we get those is a different story, but what should be the guideline of where well, we like sidewalks? So I'm, I'm yeah. agreeing with you. The project. Yeah, no, I just like to see where down. and to what extent. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe if you can give us a map that shows the circle of where, if we had sidewalks, people would be requested to walk from. Just you know, draw it on the on the town map and then we'll figure out where we we have some maps as to where town sidewalks are mr chair yeah. while we're talking about sidewalks and, and this is a a early elementary uh building pre-k through one i'd like to get an idea of how many students pre-k through one actually do walk to school i mean i don't believe there's a lot i'm sure there are some but i don't believe that there are a lot of students in that age group walking if the superintendent's here, she could address that. I am here. Um, we are not anticipating many students walking at all, um, partly because of the length of the distance um, and also because currently, at least, um, all children at that age level have busing offered to them. Um, however, on the other side of that, we would love to encourage families to walk and use the playground, for example. Um, so we certainly would like it to be accessible with sidewalks. But to answer your question directly, there are very few that we would anticipate walking on a, on a daily basis. Okay. If, can you maybe ground us on the topic we're on, Ken? Yeah. What? Could you please uh, ground me on what, what topic? This, this is, is a waiver? For the sidewalks? waiver for sidewalks along the entire frontage of the property. I see. Help us, help us to, help us to grant a, that one and, you know, I think, again, the history on that was that the town had already agreed to fund that portion of the sidewalk on Hayden Row and was prioritized as part of funding that had already been allocated. So that's where the history of that came from. We, we put a priority of sidewalks near the school, uh, and that's how Ash Street got very high on the list and now we've switched the school location but uh, <laughs> so uh, and we have spent almost all that sidewalk money I believe it's, it's it's but but we did at town meeting approve design money for the next round and we're still working with DPW to it's very small come, come so 130,000 yeah but that design. was design only so okay. you know yeah. so I think we're hoping to work with the town on uh, yeah. Okay, so I, I. One more question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, on the, in favor of the east side uh, sidewalk would be some alleviation of the dangerous crossing at EMC Park. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, I, 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 I think as this whole area gets developed, I think you're going to see support for the planning board of sidewalking maybe the entire area on the on the east side of of, of that area. The, 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 all the crossings are. If you could keep half of them from crossing over, that'd be good. You know, they, they're making some improvements. I noticed today to some of the ramps, et cetera, down on other parts of Hayden Road. The DPW is spending some money. So, uh, okay. Um, 
try to finish up on the last two here, and then we'll continue the hearing. Pole height, heights of the poles. I don't remember seeing a detail of, of the light poles in the parking lot somewhere. And it wasn't a detail, but the heights were on the photometric plan. I had to look really I hard have to find to, it. I'll have to double check into that because they did a photometric plan originally at the 20 foot height, and then we told uh, GGD, who is our electrical engineer, that the town has a requirement for a 15 foot pole, and they re ran it. So maybe they just submitted the old plan. This is um, also something so that this board has the ability to waive if you give us a justification. And you so know, we'll come to let us dig into it. You know, photometric. I mean, we're. We're looking that it doesn't shine off the site and make sure that it doesn't go into your neighbor's houses, etc. which I th think you're probably in pretty good shape because we're pretty of where it's located. I don't think so. Uh, and then the emergency access road is, I believe, 18 feet wide. We had a big discussion about 20 feet at our last uh, approval of a, of a site plan, our uh, solar farm. I guess the fire safety code is changed, and well, I, it, it really didn't change. The, 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 the item you were talking about was that solar array, and there was only one way to get into it. Uh, according to the fire chief, because this is a secondary means of egress, an emergency uh, access, that the requirement can be waived, and he's the one that waived it. And uh, he's only interested that the vehicles can make the turning radius. He said he could wave it down to 18 feet. Can't do that for primary entrances, only secondary entrances. So that's what we have. Well, see, this, this facility made more sense to me to require the bigger one just because, not that if there's a fire, he's going to drive wherever he wants to. Uh, well, that's the reality. That's what happened. Yeah. But, okay, but my, maybe. Do we have a letter from the fire chief on that yet? Um, not officially. We have a, an email he had sent to Mike Shepard okay. indicating that, but I can get one officially addressed to the board. Okay. To the chair. Yep. I'd like to see going back to if there was a blockage in the front, I want to make sure you can get school buses out and emergency vehicles in with no problems on that backup road. That if it's a true secondary emergency exit, that emergency vehicles can pass each other but no problem. So I'd like to see a description of that. Mm -hmm. To the chair, yep. to our officers in the audience. Is that something you guys are working on or is that something you can communicate to the chief for us or yep. Mr. Chair, just to that point, can we maybe put signage there's no parking on the sides of that road? Thank you. Okay. It's gonna be gated. If people could park there to pick their kids up and then go to the park, Welcome and they'll here. line the street because it's the closest <coughs> access to the school. <coughs> okay, so we'll talk about it. Just the signage might, might be something that might be needed. Okay, yes, sir. Just, uh, I wonder if this might also be consideration for that concern the gentleman just had that if the town is planning on a future uh, loop road through here, whether that would, as a second means, fully full roadway uh, from the loop here alleviate some of the concern of that being plans for that, yeah. that's future though that's right. future so. yes. yeah that, that, that might help if, if they truly bring it back out to Hayden Row mm -hmm. right you know we don't but we'll talk a little bit about that hopefully we'll get some it's people time. from the Irvine to Darrow it's time. It's time. Me. so it's basically time. we're at time for our next hearing Jennifer when should we continue this I assume you want the next meeting um, yeah, July 25th at 7.30. That sounds good. So look for a motion to continue the public hearing to July 25th at 7. So oh, hold it. It's 7.30 or should we do 7? 7? 7.30. 7.30. What do we have on July 25th? Nothing at the moment. But this will be the first but, item. But we'll have uh, legacy. probably that's the only thing left, right? The, the Nothing's been filed. New. And they, so they won't make that in time for... No, and I did speak to somebody today, but he probably won't make um, until at least late August, so... Okay, so 7.30 at, on July... 28th. 25th. 25th. 
move and second. Okay. Yes, Mike. Uh, can we, we, can we make a special attempt here to get the Zadaro Irvine Property Study Committee here? They don't have a lot to offer, and I think it will probably take them 30 seconds. If, if, rather than have them all come back next time, would you listen to what they've been planning for that area up to this point? Well, you can try all fairness. What? We'll chat 30 seconds later next time. Okay. Go for your first 30 seconds, but we will. Uh, no, no, we we got to keep going. I'm I'm sorry, but so for the, the next hearing, uh, what we'll, we'll, what's the time limit will be allotted? You know, we we need to cover a lot. We spent a large chunk of time just going through the list that we've already assembled. We just want to make sure we're respectful of your time. Sure. And the 20 people we brought tonight that we can move through yep. the process. I don't know. We'll we'll figure that out when we get done with our next hearing, but at least an hour and 15 minutes, which would be kind of half the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In the meantime, we'll uh, follow up through the, the town planner and, and your consultant. Any, anything you guys do. Uh, look, we have a motion and a, and a second on the floor to continue the public hearing. All further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, guys. started. Uh, we're missing two members today. They have not missed any other meeting, I believe, so they will, they will be eligible to, to vote after reading or uh, 
watching the, uh, the, the tapes. The tapes, the tapes, okay. And they're both good at that. So. Who's not, who's not here? Just so I... Cliff is oh, yeah. not here, and also uh, Matt. 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 Okay. Anyway, we're getting there. So, uh, we'll reopen the continued public hearing for the Northeast, Northwest, and North Club villages at Legacy Farms. It's an application for a Osmond site plan review. Um, uh, I'm just opening up the site plan review, um, the master plan special permit, and the Both of the master plan special permits suggest we do not open those up tonight so that we don't lose members on those that we're at. Um, so let's start with a motion to continue the two special permit applications to January, I mean, July, 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 uh, 25th, 25th at 7.30, so about 8.45. Uh, so, did anyone make the motion? We need a motion and a second. Discussion? If we made it at 9, we'd give the schools a little bit more time and then Legacy could have the rest? Or? Well, I was going to give Legacy in an hour and 15 minutes and the school in an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, so moved. Okay. <laughs> moved and seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay, so those are set. Uh, 725 at 8. It's the same time as the and so, um, anyway, we've got the public hearing reopened for the uh, review. The planning board received electronically on Thursday a whole pile of stuff uh, after our deadline and after the time that the beta folks could provide any review and comment. Uh, We'll talk about most of that stuff next time, mm -hmm. as opposed to this time. We just don't have an awful lot. Uh, for members of the planning board and other people interested, we did receive comments from on the peer review on the LMG stuff. It wasn't exactly what I was expecting, per se. I guess it never always <laughs> is. But I think uh, we're going to have a discussion hopefully this week, and, and sort it out. Basically, it was a review comment that said, yeah, maybe, but there's a little bit of homework on a couple of things. So I, that's how I characterize it, 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 you know. And uh, uh, so uh, we'll, we'll get that sorted out. Hopefully, we'll get that sorted out so we can talk about that subject at our next meeting, which is a critical one. The other thing for our next meeting or so, we need, need to start drafting the conditions now that vacation time is over. <laughs> and, uh, play time's over. And, yeah, you and Elaine to start start working on, on that whole area. And then I think from beta standpoint, you now have this pile of drawings, I yes. think, or maybe, maybe it's a different pile. It's a bigger pile. It's this one. It's down <laughs> at the bottom. It's this pile. Uh, and you know, pick one of the villages and try to get through that one first, and then you know we can minimum. You know, if you can't get all three of three villages done all at once, we'd like to at least talk about that at our next meeting for right. sure. Mr. Chairman, if I could, can I just characterize what was submitted to you sure, so that everyone's absolutely. aware? Uh, what what we provided on Thursday was basically. A revised submission package that's the culmination of all the meetings we've had to date with both the design review board uh, responses to the beta peer review comments to date uh, everything that we've been through uh, in this room in terms of um, design has been incorporated into this set uh, so that's it's the summary document that, that captures 
all of it, in addition to the uh, revised construction management plan that incorporates um, the commentary from, from our meetings with you uh, and the beta comments as well. So that is that has also been provided. So it's it's not just one village, it's, it's all of the villages. We've applied all of those design principles to each of each of the components, uh, so that should be comprehensive and uh, and ready for for review. Okay, and, and you know, board members, we ought to be prepared for that and the construction management plan at the next meeting. I mean, uh, so uh, we've got we were making some progress on the outline. We're working our way down through the, sorry, F, just F the rail bus. We were doing F, I know, we're not yep, yeah, correct. We, we'd end up uh, with the school bus waiting areas. Yep. Uh, you going to suggest, what, where are we in Conservation Commission? We, um, we just met with them prior to, to, to coming here. Um, Essentially, there aren't really any any outstanding concom issues. They just wanted to make sure that we got through um, uh, through the planning process and got the clean uh, clean beta letter. Okay. So they've continued the meeting until uh, seven twenty five as well. So we'll meet with them again. So we'll, we'll get uh, them at the same time. Okay. And uh, but as John said, they seem to be. Uh, happy with the plans. They have a final set of plans as well, a final set of stormwater, the complete package, and they are relying on the beta review letter, and they've asked us to provide that when we have it. So, um, okay. Uh, could you provide us information on where you are on your 5,000 feet? You know, you get 5,000 feet of replicate or wetland impact. How much, how much is used up on the north side is kind of the question. Where are we on the accounting? I can get that from the uh, BHP. BHP is from keeping track of that. That would be, that would be very helpful. Are you, are you thinking of East Main Street? Yes. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, you know, well, I think we've been doing this for nine years. We'll probably figure this out. Um, okay. I think we'll leave that one open, but we'll, it doesn't sound like there's any major, is there any major concerns of members of the board that are coming out of the Concom wetland area? Um, most I of think this is that uh, the, most of the, uh, the wetland stuff has been handled and the construction road takes a lot of the stress off the road, uh, you know, to redo stormwater management planning, it's all, seems to be coming along, uh, but I did not meet this week with, or last week with my, my counterparts, I, I haven't got any feedback directly, so I got, should be okay. Okay. Uh, we had town department and head and board comments. I'm I was trying on to there before I came on board, so I don't know. I don't think, I mean, they've been in the, the memo the same, for the last. Yeah, it's been the same one since the beginning, so I don't know if there's been any I don't think we've gotten anything new from that area. No. Uh, and I think we've incorporated most of the most of the ones that we have had in, in the so. in the letters. I get, I'll just double check it. Are we expecting feedback through uh, our board um, selectmen and police and fire departments on the um, call it, contingency planning for the gas? From the peer reviews from that? Are they, are they reviewing that or is that just up to us? It's really uh, just up to us. I mean, we got the report from the selectmen on, on, the, on the vapor dispersion area. Uh, as I think we might have mentioned, it's up to the selectmen to maybe rebuild the barrier on Wilson Street that was identified in that report as a safety hazard. And that's in their purview. Uh, and we'll hopefully mitigate the vapor area and have a lot more information on the thermal for our next review. Well, we are expecting the fire chief to comment. And, and, we, we're, and now that we have that, we're giving it to the fire chief to make a 
some comments on it. So, thank you. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to skip over the beta report on outstanding items because until you've re looked at the plans, that, that's a meaningless point at this point. You yeah. Know? We've had discussions with Polar as ongoing, and uh, from their verbal communication and the response letter they submitted previously, I don't know they've what. They stated that they've addressed everything, but as you say, we need to. I don't know through. whether it makes sense to start with a new letter because you almost got a whole set of new plans. Yeah, I think it does. I mean, I think the last letter that we got back was, was sort of closing out comments that have been addressed, addressing new comments. I mean, if there if there's if there's stuff that, if there's stuff that go, continues on, we have to go throw. back. Yeah. yeah, we have to go back and make sure things that were said were going to be addressed are reflected. And I'm sure they are, but we go, we'll, we'll go back and do that as mm -hmm. a matter of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm, so, I'm just. But I agree. I, I think I, the I, new letter is. All ones that are closed out, we don't necessarily need yeah, the paper. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're killing enough trees <laughs> with this project as it is, you know. Uh, let's see. Uh, buildable revised map. I think we're all set on where that is on, for this project. Uh, we have one. I don't know if we've provided it. So we, we haven't, as we've been making these these changes to you know, all the houses, the shifts, and all that, we've been tweaking this um, the buildable area map as well. Uh, we've reviewed that through the process, and um, we'll make sure that you've got the, the final updated um, buildable area map, make sure nothing's continuing to change. But it's everything that we've continued to, to present relative to the, the reduction of the uh, of the buildable area from what was previously proposed. Okay. So that's kind of the action item on that. It's just to, to get a the latest and greatest map at the end so that we can yep. we'll, we'll have to attach it to the special permit mm -hmm. decision anyway. So okay. Uh, traffic analysis and future studies. Trying to remember exactly what we had the idea and what was going on with this one. I think I think what we were thinking about is we get a opportunity at site plan review to look at traffic at the approval. And sometimes it's kind of tough to figure out what, what, what the traffic's like at the beginning of the whole process. I mean, it's, there's no actual experience, per se. I don't know. When, when we wrote the master plan special permit, that it was supposed to be in, in sections. I was, Mr. Chairman, I was going to say, there is defined timelines in the master plan special permit. For instance, I think we just did one six months ago, maybe, mm -hmm. something like that. I know there's another one that comes up. I'll pick a timeline maybe a year from now. So they are prescribed in the master plan special permit. Okay. Well, when you write the conditions, we want to make sure we can, I think, continue that process. Okay. I'm talking about traffic analysis, I guess there's been a couple of not too nice accidents right there at the intersection at this point. I've heard from several folks that live in that area that, wow, did you see that one? So I East Main, East Main and, and Legacy. 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 I, I don't know whether it's a speed related issue or what. I think it's speed actually because I've stood out there and I see cars go by 50 miles an hour. So it's actually quite yeah. dangerous how fast people drive. I mean, it's shocking when you stand out on that sidewalk and you've probably seen it, Jane. I think you need to patrol that more or put up some slow down signs or something. Probably eventually going to need a traffic signal, right? I, I, I think, it, well, go ahead. Yeah, so, just so everybody knows, we actually have run conduits on all four corners under the street. And we have put hand holes in. Because the last thing we want to do is dig up the street all over again a few years from now. But the traffic count, believe it or not, is not high enough to warrant 
a traffic light, and the state wouldn't approve it. I think the traffic count now is under 16,000 per day, and I think it has to get over 18 or 19,000. So yeah, but after Legacy Park, the, the, the traffic I'm not so sure it's going to hit the number. Okay. I don't think it's the, the amount of traffic. I mean, I travel that road every day, and when I come down Legacy Farm to take a right onto Main Street, the, it's clear. I look to my left, it's clear, and halfway through the turn, someone comes around that curve. They're doing 40 miles an hour, which is the limit, right? It's a speed. Could you take it down to 30, right? Extend the town. I think you'd be fine at 35. It's the cars who are going 45 and 50 that's a problem. It's yeah, it's just it's a speed thing. It's not a it's not an amount of traffic. I've almost been hit there several times. They do that in Woodville on 135. They have a 35 mile an hour zone section, you know. Well, that's what I've seen in some towns where they have that flashing light, they're going too fast. It's very effective. It subconsciously makes you slow down. I saw that one. We just need to know. They are aware of how fast they're going. And those signs would help. And I would suggest that if you do a count on the intersection of Legacy Farms in East Bay, you'll find a similar amount of Crestwood in East Bay. The what? I didn't hear the you'll last gate. You'll find a similar amount of accidents at Crestwood in East Bay. Crestwood. It's just that East Bay is, can be a very fast road. Yeah, yeah. It People is. trying to exit um, and get caught every once in a while. And I think that those signs, those flashing signs, Put them up in Southboro. It says um, this is the speed and this is how fast you're going. A lot of people don't need to go that fast, but they do. And some of those signs might help. The posted permanent speed limit coming up East Main Street by Ray Street uh, between Prescott and Ray is posted permanent 20 miles an hour. That was through the center of town. People just don't realize they're flying 40. Mm. Unless you're on a horse, you're not going 20 miles an hour. Yeah. Officer right there. We put a police officer out there for a period of time, start putting a few tickets, people will then they'll get the message. Right. Well, well it's, it can't be every place at all times. No, so, but, but there are, they make some really innovative tra traffic safety preventative signal signs now. What? Maybe we could talk to the police department about that and see if they could get something up there. What's the speed limit in front of your house, Jane? Until you get to the town, we're dropping 25. Right? Yeah, I bet it's 40. I mean, and, and they, yeah, and they go 60. I mean, not all of them, but it's just that one one that will catch you. Maybe, maybe that's some place where the town ought to start thinking about 35. Or yeah, you're gonna have to I get the state involved, so. but it could be. Yeah, it just could be. something to, to consider that the state is the only body organized to set speed limits. So you have to go through a process to actually right. so you can't arbitrarily just say 35. So and to some degree you don't have the control to do that. There's just something to bear in mind. Correct. You have the authority to put the flashing state. sign. You could only do it as a warning or an advisory type sign, but that's not enforceable in terms of ticketing. So, Correct. so there's a dilemma there that, that's could very, we, very common. Could we request a what is the traffic safety audit? We the town? What, I'm trying to remember the the, the, the name of that. The traffic safety audit with the potential of reducing the... the, the, the you, you could, you've got to be careful what you wish for. Um, yeah, good luck with if that. you do a speed study and it's coming in at 45, then yeah, you, you know, they'll post it on on the 85th percentile speed of the study. So so it may, it may suggest that 40 is accurate, it may suggest 45 is okay. You just have to be careful with, with how you approach it. It could come in worse than what you're hoping for. Is what what? Me meaning, you meaning may be hoping for 25 and they might post it at 30. 40. 40. So it's, 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 a, it's, a tricky, well, it's a tricky situation. Well, they wouldn't increase it any more than it is, <coughs> would they? They, they, they should. No, they they should. They should. I think you need to factor in the and accident they, data as well. Well, that's, like that's, what, that's what this, this traffic safety audit does. Right. They, they look at there, There's about 10 people from the state that come around them because they did it downtown. And, you know, they will write you 30 pages of what might be, make it better. Yeah, those are typically done when, as part of an intersection uh, design. Mm -hmm. Did the state do one or not? On road safety audits? They, they, they tend to be driven by accident clusters. Yeah. So if you're having some accidents there, that might trigger a road safety audit. They probably don't have all the new data in their database. And they would but be looking for fatalities on 
Not necessarily. I mean, it, it, it could be it, it could be just a frequency of a particular kind of accident. For example, if it was left turns or right turns, and there was a corrective action, that would be the purpose of the road safety audit to sort of look for those trends and, and themes and so forth. Mr. Chair, should we table this? Uh, do you think? Should we go through with the emergency folks? Well, it's one of the solutions would be for them to fix it if there was a determined that a fix was needed. Right. I'm not sure we're there, but I'm, I'm not sure we're getting a recommendation. I, I'm just hearing <coughs> uh, more accidents are hitting that, that corner and, you know, is there something we should be doing to, yeah. Mr. Right. Chairman, I'd be happy to look into that flush and speed sign if you'd like me to. Well, the town uh, owns, uh, owns a couple of them, <laughs> the mobile ones. There are some solar powered ones that That's are on single posts. Oh, this, is, this is permanent. Oh. And it's permanently uh, put on the road. I think it's a good idea. On the road. Okay. So one says your, idea. your speed should be going 35, but you are actually going 50. Got gotcha. you. And it does slow people down. It does slow people down because most people don't realize that they're going that fast. Or people have a radar detector on it and it probably gives them a radar that detector. That only works if there's a cop on the other. No, oh, but the, the, the sign's got a radar detector, or radar yeah, beam. Yeah, but I don't know if it's enough to pick it up. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, does. I think, it, it, I think you need the reader and the speed limit, because if I see that reader and it says I'm going 45, and I notice the speed limit's 45, I'm not going to slow down. But you got to have the 35 mile an hour speed limit plus the sign, yeah. in my opinion. I'm just saying. Well, okay, well, well, we'll look at the... It's, look. It's, an, it's an option. It's not the end-all solution. They're not expensive. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. Where are we? Traffic. Next item was on the list was community impacts and mitigation. I think. I think what we, we, we probably need to revisit what, what we had in the uh, the agreement okay. and just make sure that we have not triggered any more of the events that are in the host community agreement. Uh, Elaine has a very accurate <laughs> I know. Yeah, she, updated. <laughs> she does. She has a very thorough. Every time <laughs> I need have a question she sends it to me and it's updated and it's very and it just it's everything from the master plan special permit that is a, a requirement. ongoing requirement with a with a timing yep. threshold associated with it okay let's let's try to get that updated list from her just okay. to make sure we haven't bumped into anything with that okay so then we're kind of back to the other open items. Did you go over N or what? Master Plan Special Permit? Well, I think that that's okay. that same <laughs> okay. same list, okay. I guess. Sure. In the host community agreement, okay. design yes. guidelines. Okay, thank you. I, I sense the design guidelines were okay with because they were fairly general anyway. Mm -hmm. So, uh, unless anyone had any objections to on that, I think we're all set on <laughs> the design guidelines. Going back to uh, affordable units on the project, we received uh, from Roy to Mark, from Mark a list of Pulte affordable units. Uh, we'll be checking the references. Mm -hmm. I also was at a state meeting last week, and I <coughs> one of the members of the Water Resources Commission is sitting next to me was the representative from Housing and Economic Affairs, and she gave me the name of a guy that came back from vacation today that supposedly is the state authority on this, how well it works, and I didn't have the nerve to ask him another question on his first day back, but tomorrow's his second day back, and <laughs> that won't bother me at all. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll get that information to the board hopefully uh, soon. I'm just looking where we have other pieces that we should be working on. 
since I don't really want to let everyone out that early. <laughs> yes, sir. Are you going to go over the construction management plan this evening? Uh, not until we've had time to, to bait his comments and whatever. I went over very quickly in my comments, and from our meeting, I thought I saw about 10% of what I had thought about. So, can I just say yeah. something to that point? I didn't review it just as a matter of principle. Um, the planning board and the planning department have set up a deadline to submit items um, so that there is time for review, and it was submitted after the deadline. So as a matter of principle, I did not review it. That, that's fine. If I could just make a response to that. So there was no disrespect to the, to the board that we submitted it on Thursday rather than Tuesday. We were well aware of the Tuesday deadline for this meeting. Um, but w with what we submitted, as Matt said, it was a comprehensive full set of site plans that really encompassed everything we've talked about today. So we thought it was more important to get everything in there with um, review time um, and make it as accurate as we could be. And also with the, co with the construction management plan, there was a lot of oversight, there was a lot of internal review, um, and there was a lot of thought put into it. So again, we wanted to get it right and thorough and comprehensive <coughs> rather than rush it in to beat some deadline the day after 4th of July mm -hmm. when we were all struggling with our schedules as well. So. Um, I, I respect that you didn't look at it, and we're, we're happy to talk about it at the next meeting. And you know, we just um, that that was that was that's really our our, our thought process. Mr. Chair, can I just yep. respond? Yeah. I do want to say I appreciate having the extra time to review it for the next meeting. Yep. Because yeah. there's a lot of information, mm -hmm. and having that extra time, I do appreciate having it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we now all have paper copies because we got those today, mm -hmm. and some of us can't re read. Big plans on, on our small laptops, so uh, that helps a little bit. Uh, so we're we've got a lot of homework. Yeah. Can I make? A, I sounds like we're open agenda right now. Yeah, we are. Can I bring up a, an item that sure. I've discussed in the past, but I'm not sure of the status of it. Okay. Um, I I feel strongly that I know you had said that the Legacy North and Legacy South roads are a done deal. We missed the boat on that, but. I really would like to see curbs put in on the sidewalk side, the non-drainage side, and I, I don't, I'm not sure that we did miss that boat. You know, the way I understand it, there was uh, a bond for that road, that, that sorry, state funding. Somebody correct me, was it like five hundred thousand or something like that? More than build, that. To, to build that road. So I mean, I don't know how the builder feels about that concession. The concern I think that you're having is that we're getting a lot of erosion on parts of the Ero erosion aesthetics. I just I don't think we're going to be able to throw grass in that little gap there. It's going to be covered with sand. What? Right. Uh, that would be quite problematic because the drainage, the pitch of the road, the Low, in, uh, low impact development standards, everything that was designed for. I'm, I'm only talking about no, the high, no. side, the high side of the road where the mm -hmm. sidewalks are, so it wouldn't affect the drainage. Well, it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, because some areas the pitch is one way, some areas the pitch is another way. I, mean, I can discuss that with VHB, but I think that would be really with, Sorry, with who, the H? VHB, the, the engineers that designed the whole road. Okay. The My concern is that the design of the runoff for the whole road is based on concept that it is. The minute you start adding curbing, it changes everything relative to the runoff. To say nothing of what it would do to the height of the road relative to the height of the sidewalk. And there's a litany of reasons why that could be problematic. Now, it might be that when we do the finished coat of paving, I don't know if you've seen some instance where when you pave a road, there's this little curled edge on the shoulders. It's, it's up about a little mi mini berm. It's, yeah. like, it's like a mini berm. Um, Gentlemen, know what I'm talking about. They pull these use in some of their Cape Cod berms sometimes. If you it's, do it, it's about more. Oh, maybe this high, about this wide. It's in essence. Think about it like when you when you're spraying the asphalt, you roll everything with that last outside inch or two, and that sort of creates but a mini berm. That's, sorry that, that's how Hopkinton did most of their streets in the 80s and the 90s. Yeah, sorry to interrupt, but 
I, I don't think we did it the right way the first time, and I would like to do it the right way the second time, and not do the mini berm to an actual berm. In my opinion. Yeah, and you were saying I, I can look into that, but I, I don't think we're going to be able to do it given the design of the road. Let's 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 look at areas where it's obvious the seating is not working. You know, I mean, there's you know. If, if it's areas where we've been trying to grow grass on that street for... You talking about Legacy South? South and North. I mean, maybe we have beta folks kind of go through there too, because you'd obviously want to do that before you do the finish coat on, on whatever you do. But, you know, if if there's areas that, you know, particularly on the South Side, if we haven't grown grass in two years or three years, you know, it's just not going to happen. Mr. Chairman, most of the vast majority of the south side you can grow grass on it. The problem has been with all the construction, the construction vehicles driving on both shoulders. And that's one of the things we're not going to be doing on the north side because, as you recall, on the south side, those tr large trucks and machines are running up and down the whole length of the road. Yep. So that's been a little bit problematic. The other thing is that the main entrance of Legacy, all the cars, mothers picking up the kids, park there. And that's the reason why the grass is not growing there. I think we, we've alleviated that problem on the north side by these drop-off areas. But I think on Legacy South, it, it, near East Main Street, we have to do one or two things. We either have to pave an extra foot or so there where the cars pull off the edge, or we're going to have to live without that grass when all of the cars parked down. Now, if the school bus comes through later on, that won't be a problem. But currently, all the mothers sit there waiting to pick up their kids. Yeah, there should be not as much of a reason for people to to park there once once school bus. It's school also and you know the curbs. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say that's <laughs> the purpose of a curb to prevent people from following up on the side of the road too. Well, the problem then is they'd be parking in the middle of the street. You're gonna park there no matter what. Yeah. Well, jump over well once the, the final paving gets done on that south side, at least, and, and that intersection gets cut to the right the motion the, for the plans, then. Be probably a little bit better shape. Uh, but so you think we get a beta to take a look at that? Well, let me have the HP look at it because okay, thank it you. Anything? Okay. Okay. I'm not sure where we can go from now, given that we got this huge data dump, and that's what's kind of next to talk about, I think. I, I think we've gotten, through, we've gotten through just about everything. Oh, we received um, uh, an agreement uh, from Andy and Crowd with Pulte, and that, you know, I think you all got, did that, that all came in? Yes. yes. The agreement, yeah, yep. for Tip Street. Yep. And Sounds like that'd be something that we put in the in the conditions. Uh, Sounds like both parties are happy, right? This, yep, that's what I read in it. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so, for our next get together, we got beta. Oh, go ahead. I you know, just want just one suggestion. I'm not going to want to keep everyone here, but does it make sense perhaps for the uh, applicant to give you a briefing on the construction management plan tonight while while they're here? I don't know if you're ready to. It might help with your general interpretation. We've seen it. We have commented on it. They've responded to the comments. So we think it, it's ready for discussion. Um, but just a suggestion. Well, we could. If I could respond. Yeah. Um, I appreciate you want to get things moving along, but you work for us. No, no, it's just a, just a suggestion. Um, that's okay. But uh, my point is, though, it, I support what Brian said earlier. And no offense to you guys. Mm -hmm. I, no. I'd like that you no, sent no. everything and it's all here. All new members especially, this was very much helpful. Mm -hmm. um, but us, all of us need to review it. And frankly, it's, it's a little bit like a, you're putting a, a chopper up or an digesting this information we just don't have time to do it if it happens after our deadline it is it's not in, it's not about the fourth of july and stuff it's, you know we're all it's like a, we're all busy with our lives yeah. you know so.
well, we're doing our best we can. But I think maybe the discussion will go better complete if we just hit it one time and just go, we'll start at page one of it and we'll just go right on through with everyone's comments and, you know, hopefully we'll get through parts a bit faster than others. Uh, I know I've gone through it. Most of my comments are probably the same. They've all heard my comments, so and that's usually a lot of them. So hopefully I'll have rebuttals to whatever they didn't want to incorporate. So, uh, let's see. So we've got beta review and construction management and that whole drawing package with a new letter. We've got Jennifer working on conditions. Conditions, you want the mitigation spreadsheet up to date and copy sent out. Um, and then you want the peer review for the LNG yeah. taken care of. Yeah. Priority, if we get the LNG straightened out, that'll be the, the number one item. We'll know that before that meeting. If and we'll, 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 we'll solve work on that. We also need to work on conditions for the two master plan special permits, which, but that'll be after the LNG stuff gets sorted out. So we ought to make sure that we have all the latest and greatest documents that support both of those as far as the the plans that get attached to it. And we got to make sure we get the conditions written such that somebody can understand them. <laughs> Which, so anyway, that, that'll make, make things fun. Uh, what other action items? Action items to the boards, we got a lot to review. Mm -hmm. did I say 845? 845 on the 25th. Anyone else have it? Anyone from the audience have anything today? Go, go. When will the uh, construction plans and the um, uh, drawing package be on, on the website? As soon as I can do it. <laughs> I will make every effort tomorrow to do it, okay. but give me a Wednesday maybe. <laughs> Either that or for no, I'll try Andy, do you want us to email yeah, them to you? Matt. <laughs> yeah, I, I probably have an email somewhere, but he just offered to email it to if you want. Yeah, we, we email all the time. Okay. Just well, uh, uh, last. Sure. How, how you doing on your wires, your electricity? Uh, I just signed full wires tomorrow. Congratulations. Thank you. And they're going to add a few more feet of underground cat conduit. Obviously, uh, probably about 200 feet. Okay. So when you say full wires, what are they be doing? Full so wires. we have we have two what's called PME nine switches and a big transformers. There's one on either end of the site. Okay. We've already extended the conduits under Franklin <coughs> up to an existing pole, and then on the far side, we're going to extend existing conduits to another pole a little bit up Wilson Street. That's probably 150 feet additional conduit. What they're going to start doing tomorrow is there are manholes in the street about every 500 feet. So they're going to start pulling three cables that are about oh, that big around through the whole length of the road. And they'll tie those to the transformer switches and then eventually tie it to the poles. How do they do that? They run my long snake or something? No, no, no. They got it. Well, first they got to put in uh, about 20 miles of what's called a mule tape. And what they do is they tie their cable to the mule tape. It's on a big roll of truck. And they pull the cable through. And once they pull the cable through, then they, they tie on the, uh, the big heavy cable to the, to the cable, the wire cable. And the big truck has a big roll on it. And they pull it through the whole little pull it 500 feet at a time. Nice. Yeah, big spools. Yeah. Heavy duty stuff. So that mule tape is gone then. So there's no way to put any more in. Oh, no, no. Once you pull the mule tape, you just it. throw it away. One and done. That's what I figured. But it's somebody, somebody from the, the Eversource probably has a garage full of it. It's got 2,500 pound pull pressure. Oh, yeah. It's good stuff. All right.
Okay. Look for, looking for a motion to uh, continue the public hearing to 845 on July 25. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded for the discussion. Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see. Uh, Thank you. I think we're into sidewalks at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Segway from our elementary school discussion. Yes. Paperwork from our last meeting which talks about sidewalks. And we got the survey results. I think the number one was West Main Street and Main Street and West Main was 30, 10% of the, more than 10% of the comments came from on that subject. Chestnut Street also got a lot. More on Ash Street, Granite and Lumber, and then Hayden Row. Uh, Wood Street got a few, and Fruit Street. I think what we're seeing a lot of this is there are fairly large streets mm -hmm. that are tr that people are getting concerned with. Busy streets, too. Busy like streets. Ca cars drive down all of them a lot. And you know, the rest, the rest of them, the, the onesie twosies areas. West Main Street was Upton to School Street. School Street to Oakhurst. Oakhurst to Priscilla, Priscilla to the Downey Street, Downey to Price Chopper, etc. The Downey to Price Chopper was fairly high on that list of streets. Yeah. If people might remember when we approved Price Chopper, we looked at that area. And the only way you can get a sidewalk there is if you take all the beautiful pine trees off of a house that's right on the corner of Downey and West Main Street. And can't do it on the other side. No, I haven't looked at it at all. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, make yeah, it. Yeah, it, it doesn't, yeah. Right. There's yeah. nothing on that side. Yeah. 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 The, the, the yeah. real purpose is to get, to get from Downey Street to Price Chopper, which I think would be a, would be used a lot. Right. The chair. Yeah. Living in that area, I've noticed obviously the warm weather, but a higher number this year than I have remembered in the past year walking along that route. Women with children and women with carriages on the street. It scares the living daylights out of me with the traffic. Mm -hmm. You know, on it. Luckily, you know, it, they tend to be walking on that side, and that I'm seeing the heavier in the afternoon commute. But it's getting the usage along that stretch as stuff develops closer is getting heavier and heavier. People walking it. You're referring to West Main Street? West Main Street. Uh, between the, the Price Chopper and. Probably Tennessee. going downy and even up a little bit. And then you add in the people who are fishing on either side, <laughs> you know, which... Mr. Chairman, I, I um, put together a one-page notes of just some numbers of what it's costing us for what we did and what we planned, like a few samples of what we oh, could okay. do. Can I yeah, go out? please. Just so we can discuss this. So, 
the, the first, I don't know if you guys get it, but the first section is what we completed in 2005 to 2016, Ash Street. I got these notes from, uh, I think it was town meeting or something like that. Basically, the cost per foot of the first line item, Ash Street, I think was a little expensive because it must have been cement where all the rest of these were asphalt. Mm -hmm. um, but it basically comes down to about $150 a foot that we're paying for all these streets. So it's quite a sum of money. I just took a few things, samples. Obviously, we're going to vote to figure out streets, but for the proposed, um, I know we talked about doing Ash Street all the way down. So what I did is I just counted telephone poles. You know, this wasn't an exact science, just to get us a rough feel. It assumed that mm -hmm. telephone pole was 125 feet apart. So to finish Ash Street, it looks like it would be like 468 plus 262. So it would be like, actually, I put that example all the way down the bottom, actually, for the total cost, even the proposed, I believe. Yeah, the, last, the first two were what we already did, 255 and 149. Mm -hmm. And if we wanted to do it, 468 and 262. So it would be about a million dollars for about I don't know, a mile and a half of Ashtree, whatever it is. So it does get expensive. I had talked before about maybe we could hire a couple more DPW people and uh, do our own sidewalk since we have all the equipment. That's, you know, that's something completely separate. But this, I just wanted to throw out some, some numbers so we could, we could see, like, it's not going to be cheap to do all these sidewalks. It's going to be expensive. One of, one of the tools that you might think about instead of count poles, which is a kind of an interesting way. <laughs> On the GIS site, if okay. you haven't got to that, it's it's, no. if, uh, it's on the, the town website. When it comes up, it's kind of in the lower left. Okay. And it's got an, it's an interactive map. And so you can get, like the drawings that Jennifer gave me earlier today, I think. Yep. Somewhere. Let's see, those would have been on the school, right? So, basically, you can get from this GIS. Yep. Well, they also have a, a device if you go down to the bottom part, and it'll measure or it'll calculate areas oh, nice. for you. Nice. So you, you can just, just click, click, click on it and points, and, 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 yeah, okay. and okay. it's, it's okay. kind of a, it's, it's a nice tool. And, and not only that, but when you, and I guess we're in the education mode a little bit. <laughs> uh, you can click on every one of the properties, find out where the, who the owner is, what it's assessed. You can you can find out well, everything. Does that, that go to that Patriot Properties? Yes. Okay, because I've used that yeah. before. So it, it all it all links together. Mm -hmm. I caution you that certain lots, including my own, the frontage numbers are all screwed up. So it's not. Uh, that's the most accurate information. Yeah, but it would be great for what I just would instead but, of cutting poles. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, particularly if the streets are straight. But even if it, even if it's a curved street, you can you know just keep taking uh, an additional number on it as you go sure. on. John, through the chair, just something related to sidewalks, and it might not, it might be true, it might not be true, but on. How it came up is on DeCarlo, there's a rented panel truck that at night has been parking there for about six weeks, one or two nights a week. Where, where is this? On DeCarlo, as soon as you come off West Main, driver gets out, gets in another car and leaves. And it's parked on the sidewalk. And I have called the police numerous times because I said it's parked on the sidewalk. And there I had two policemen telling me it's not illegal in Hopkinton to park on the sidewalk. I heard that. Which seems to <laughs> kind of. I thought there was an ordinance. But if it's an unlicensed, unregistered, no, it's not registered a property, then it can't park overnight on the sidewalk. Yeah, it's not. But that's maybe my street. But it, it's interesting if it's. And I said, go back and check because I can't believe that you can pull up in any part of town park on a sidewalk, it seems to ruin the whole idea of a sidewalk yeah. if you could park on the sidewalk and then force that, people to walk in the street. It wouldn't be a zoning board bylaw, but it's kind of one of those that's kind no, of in between. probably be a general. I, know I couldn't find it in the yeah. general, but I, I, I found it in traffic. Oh, the traffic rates? Yeah, uh, the state. 
I can't find it in a in materials from the state. So the manual to get your driver's license, etc. It says in Massachusetts you're not allowed to park on a sidewalk. Uh, but I can't find where what statute that what statute it's in. But it just seemed odd. I had two. I had one who said when I'm uh, of the three I spoke to, one said let me go back and check because he said what you're telling me seems to make sense. But I had two of them say now in Hopkinton you're allowed to park. So I said, you mean on Main Street in the center of town I can park on the sidewalk and that's fine? Hmm. And they just kind of looked at me. <laughs> well, I said Robert to take a picture. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, might, we might suggest a general bylaw to the to town meeting right. like we do for other ones. I mean, it, you know, that type of thing doesn't have to go through Zach because it's not his only advisory. Right. Uh, his only it just bylaw. seems... But, really odd, you know. And I look. Many other juris uh, municipalities have specific. Yeah. You're not permitted to park on a sidewalk. Oh, then so we can copy the bylaw from somebody else. Yeah. So so can it'll be easy to write. Can you drive on a sidewalk? Well, you can cross it when you're going on your you driveway. Park on it. You can ride a bike on the sidewalk in Hopkinton. <laughs> Jennifer told us that, right? It has to be a city. Yeah. I ne never told. I thought you oh told, no, you Elaine told, mentioned that oh, when well, we had that meeting. In a city, you can well, in, in a in a urban area. So like in the downtown, you cannot because that's considered oh. urban. Oh. But if you were like out somewhere in the outskirts of town, you could ride on the sidewalk, ride your bike on the sidewalk. Okay, so let's let's kind of talk for a couple more minutes on sidewalks. I want to reply to David. Um, thank you for putting this together. Yeah. Uh, and I, I agree we should find uh, more affordable ways to build uh, simple sidewalks. Yeah. Um, we don't, I know there's ADA compliance regulations, uh, but if we don't, it's, 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 if the difference is not having any sidewalk and having more just an asphalt walkway or something, uh, and when and where we need to widen them or make them more cement-like, then I think the ones we did were really basic. There's the asphalt, they're on the side of the road, they look nice, they have a curb. Sure. But I'm just surprised they're so expensive. I mean, $150 a foot, take a 10 foot section, that's $1,500. That seems very expensive. It does. Mm -hmm. And there's no state bylaw that says we they can't, on a major thoroughfare, the state picks that up. The state picks it up or at least gives us money for it to help the us state, with that? The state doesn't do on get, a, getting, getting grants. Occasionally, there'll be a, like a, a grant for sidewalks. If somebody that obviously does sidewalks must be connected or something. Uh, maybe, maybe I shouldn't say that. But uh, well, if, we, if we adopted a complete streets policy, we could probably get some grant funding for sidewalks. But then that's a whole other and, thing. And then, but you usually spend more money on that. To, I mean, right? Because then, you, yeah, in the whole design of complete streets basically different. says you got to be able to drive bike and walk. and walk on everything and that's the, that's a, that's one of the latest state's big buzzwords yeah. for example that the downtown corridor will be complete streets because right. you, they won't fund anything without it nowadays that's so uh, I if I look at this list I think we ought to be going for I'll say big big things yeah and I think with the new school that puts Hayden Row kind of hot, higher in my list. I mean, having it, you know, it is on one side of the road, but but all the kids on the east side could potentially be walking to that. Yeah. And there, right now it stops at EMC Park. If you're coming from the, the center of town. On the east side? On the east side. Yeah. yeah. Right, it stops yeah. at EMC. I, mean, I, kind of, I think you guys are thinking that we should turn both sides all the way down, right? At least to Chestnut. To Chestnut, yeah. yeah. Seems to make sense. It, and, and maybe that, because our, our priorities the last time we set a priority was let's look at school related walking right. stuff first. Right. And maybe we'll get, as an action item, we'll get the, yeah, that, that map of where we kids might be able to walk. Another, another way to get to EMC Park is off of Blueberry. We have unfinished roads that a path through the woods could, could be done to get, I'll say, 
all the people that are using the Ash Street sidewalks to go to the center school could now get right. over to EMC Park and then Come over to, to the school. Maybe too. something with yeah. lights on it too, right? Is that something gonna... the Trails Committee could work on? Uh, trails Committee could work on that. That's why it's important to know where your walkers are coming from because if your walkers are coming from that area of town, then a sidewalk in Hayden Road isn't going to do any good if they're going to come the back way. Through Blueberry. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. It, what would be interesting if you continue to pass the school down to Waterfresh, right? Because people, I can envision people walking to Waterfresh. Yeah, walking the only, from Waterfresh. The only thing about that is I think that side of the road, it drops off a lot. So it's, it's going to be, you need that fill and it might be. I mean, we need to do it, but we need to look at that kind of stuff. It, uh, it might be a little bit more expensive for that area. And then, and then another one is, you know, we've got sidewalks that are now pretty nice to the Lumber Street on West Main Street, and it's going to be relatively expensive to get under the underpass. But there's so many people that would like to get through that intersection, you know, and, South and Street connect, or? connect, get to South Street. You know, or get to down so why, the street. Why would it be expensive to get under? Cause well, don't, yeah. they, don't they have built a sidewalk under them? No, pass? no, they There's, didn't. They refused oh, to do oh, that. There's not one there. They refused to do that at the time. The town asked for it, I believe, according to Lane, and they refused I don't know, to do it. But that will be expensive. That's and, a and, lot of infrastructure. And so you're going to have to take, you have to do what they did with the Milford bike trail when it goes under 495, yeah. and kind of cut out the Almost, yeah. the slope. They put in a retaining wall. Yeah, yeah they're doing it on my way home in Berlin on Route 62 right now, and they've been doing it for six months. And it's a lot of work and a lot of infrastructure. What if we just put a sidewalk area there, and not a sidewalk, but like a crosswalk, just striped it? We come on across South Street. Uh, John, underneath the bridge. Underneath the bridge. You know what are you talking about? The old that, that be a lot I don't cheaper. think it's wide enough. No. I, I, I'm sure that there isn't enough room for lanes. Yeah, it's tight. It's tight. It's tight. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you have to consider you're going to have 280 apartments going in on Lumber Street very soon. At the Those people are going to be walking everywhere. Well, they can walk into town now. Yeah. Right. But mm -hmm. if they wanted to walk to Price Chopper. They want to walk to Price Chopper. Who walks to Price Chopper? You'd be yeah. surprised. Yeah. Hey, so where does Price Chopper? Yeah, it would be. See if they'll help us out. <laughs> so hey, where does it stop, Ken? Is it, is it Maybe Starbucks or it's yeah. actually it's, it starts it stops at Cumberland Farm. Right. Yeah. Cumberland Farm. So we've been talking about Cumberland Farms yeah. to yeah. Price Chopper. And it's not going to be cheap in front of Cumberland Farms either because that's a, a, a real real mess. That's a tight side too. But it's, it, I think it's doable. But everything's doable, I guess. If you have the money. At what cost? <laughs> yeah. The money. Yeah. Well. You know, if you, if you look at the results of the survey. West Main Street, at least a segment of it, gets gets there. There's always been a lot of support to get to, to link across 495. And, you know, that and the other thing is I still think all the little areas where you're missing sidewalk in front of one. I did try process. to throw that down because you were talking about uh, Hayden Row, so I threw that one yeah. little section on there. So that that yeah. might only cost like $27,000 or something like that to do a little 200 foot section. Yeah. Someone mentioned uh, on the original Elm Street, uh, between Elm Street and uh, West Elm Street, uh, there could be an under, underground walkway like there is in Milford, but uh, that might be easier. Say again, where are you? Where Elm Street used to go all the way to. Um, Oh, 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 okay, yeah. that's what you're saying. What, go under, underground, dig a tunnel under 495? <laughs> that's what, that's yeah. what I did in Milford. Milford to uh That's out of the box thinking. <laughs> well, it's, no, I'm not, it's not, not, idea, not, so not harassing you. It's, it's, it's yeah. an idea I've heard before, yeah. and it's like, mm -hmm. and I've forgotten about it, I hadn't thought about it until you guys were talking about the underpass. Yeah, I thought there had been sidewalks expensive. in the underpass, but I guess if there isn't, then that's, uh, it might be easier just to do the digging. Mm -hmm. Or you can go over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 walk away to yeah. nowhere. I think you're going to look at two. I, you look at this, the, 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 the Hayden Row one for the schools, and that's clearly high visibility, safety, right. and everything. The second one is um, you know, going to Price Chopper. I think once the Muse goes in there, 
people are going to look for places to walk. What goes into yep. it? Use, right? Which is all the, the apartments. Astronomy properties. Uh, right. Yeah, 250. The apartments on number? 280. 280. Right. I, I, that's, there's a lot of people, and they like to walk. They like you to walk, yeah. gym. Going south, you've got price chopper that way. You can walk into town. That becomes then kind of nice. Yeah, that would be a nice amenity for the yeah. town. Plus, there'll be the, that pool, that yep. rec center they yeah. building. Okay. I think everyone that's going to go to any of those places has been dry. If you have a sidewalk there, if you've got a safe way of walking there, people will walk. Yeah, they'll walk. Especially, especially the swim club. Right? The swim, will walk. Yeah, or, will walk. or they'll bike. Or they'll e bike. Even, jump even, on a bike. Even Frank, I'm starting to walk more, which is <laughs> you know, really. <laughs> oh my God! Put that on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell my wife. Well, the center trail helps too. I mean, I never connected the other half, and now you can go all the way down the lump. To the, the, it cuts through the school, it's, right it's, down through. It's it's a nice little cut through. Why don't we draft a letter recommending Hayden Row and West Main Street as in, in small sections where we're missing a piece? Yeah. I mean, there's lots where one or two houses to doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, no, to the DPW. John, DPW, okay. Yeah. Well, what about the idea from uh, Cruz Street, uh, from Wood Street to the uh, Cruz Street Fields? See, I live in that part of town too, and that's the major cut across there. And I know we have important sections too, but it'd be nice to do some of that, like Cunningham Street, that area. I did throw that down well, on here. It's a very short street. Well, Cunningham's small enough, maybe that it's not a lot of traffic. It does get a lot of cut through traffic. A ton of cut through traffic, um, yeah. But, uh, I don't know. Well, we could stack some things up for future, too. I mean, we're just looking, we're, you know, to spend more than a million dollars or a million, two million dollars. What, I forget what we had the first. Well, we spent a million dollars on Ash Street. Or, we, no, no, sorry. The, yeah. Yeah, I did. That's in the future, too. So Ash I mean, you know. Three. It's like almost if, if you put too big a number, it's yeah. never going to get passed. Right. It's got to be one of those ones right. that right. just right. slides yeah. under the, you well, know. Forget we want two for the master plan transportation section. It's sort of a long term yep. sidewalk list or goal. So some of these other ones we could leave for the master plan and right. say, you know, as funding allows, you know, these are the items we'd like to check off. Sort of, so we can continue it'll be, it'll to think be about it that good, way. Good though, if we could get like a section. And you know, using the map, get the accurate distance and a rough mm -hmm. estimate. Sure, sure. Yeah, good. Like we do in that. that yeah. And, and this, uh, this this kind of really helps codify the uh, the, the cost area. You look at Carlo. Oh. I mean, you look at the two on the, the response oh. list, though. Uh, West Main and Chestnut. Yeah. With the top two. Well, Chestnut. If you get Hayden Rose down on the east side, down to Chestnut, then subsequently you can continue that to Ash. It, 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 it is already, yeah, Chestnut, Chestnut Street goes sidewalk to Wild. Correct. So you can get most of the people in that area, but if you want to get people south of that, you've got to go all the way down to Smith. Springwood, you can take it to Springwood. That, that, that captures all the people in Springwood. Nobody in Springwood walks, though. I'm just kidding. There's a friend of our kids that take bikes there. Mr. Chair, when you're done with this discussion, I have one other item. What? I have another item that came in late today, so when you're done with this discussion. Okay, I think I mean, we all set for, we'll try to draft a letter for those recommendations. Hayden Room, Hayden Room West Main, right? And, yes. and, and short pieces. Yes. Yeah. Low hanging fruit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because a lot of those short pieces are low hanging fruit too. Sure. Complete, complete the network. Okay. Uh, um, I received an email today from Dave Del Torrio. Um, it says while we are providing an update to the board of selectmen on the town wide LED streetlight conversion project, um, they directed us to reach out to various boards and commissions for input on the project. As final details are currently being worked out with the contractor with replacement of lights to start in a couple months. Um, would you please discuss this with the planning board, design review, and historical commissions to determine if they have any interest in providing any input or have any comments or questions on the project? If they do, can you find out if they prefer to provide something in writing 
or include this topic as an agenda item at an upcoming meeting. Sorry, I missed the beginning of that. LED? Light? LED yeah, street light conversion project. Street so lights conversion LED? Yeah, there was, yes. They save a ton of money. Okay, like, some, like peop it. some people are concerned that the color is different. Mm. I think that's the only negative that I've heard. We don't have any in town? There are a couple that have been done as a, a test few, case yeah, somewhere. I don't remember where. So I think the Green Committee's been spot working yeah, this one. Yeah, the Sustainable Green Committee has been. Quite the LED lights, they put out different, you can get different hues. I mean, it doesn't have to be a nasty, overly bright white. You can get warmer ones. Well, I think you can get warmer ones I and think you the have common different, is different that LEDs in, in all legacy is LEDs. Yes. So uh, maybe we can get a, a list of where the ones are and we'll put it on our agenda for next meeting. Did you want um, one of the members of the Sustainable Green Committee or David Tolder to attend that meeting? Oh, no. We have a member of the Sustainable Green Committee yeah. on your board. Did not know that. Sorry. Frank will take the lead. Okay. okay. Congratulations, right, Frank. Will be, Thank you. Um, I will say LED lighting use less power uh, and they last longer. If they cost more money, but over time they're much more valuable. Yep. So you yep. want a list Some of lo potential and locations. Uh, other items for future agenda items, etc. We're going to have to get back to goals one of these days, but I this next on, meeting is... I have it on for July 25th, but yeah, I Yeah, we'll probably move that out again, because... Okay. So I also have, we have to get back to the peer review. Oh, yes. Too. Uh, John and I and you and Elaine will meet on that okay. sometime soon. And I did I a get, brief comment. Yeah. I've got notes yeah. for mine, too, so... Yeah, i got to find my notes. I know I, I did it. I just got to find the piece of paper that's got them all on. And I have to get with Elaine on the um, economic development chapter of the master plan. Um, I don't have that yet, so. And we got to get from Dave Vittorio the engineering estimate for our right I turn lane. Don't think we're going to get that till the end of July. I believe that was the last email we got. End of July? Why so long? Because uh, the gentleman was on vacation and then he had a backlog of other work. He doesn't sound like the right guy. But maybe he is. How long have you been waiting for this? I don't. I haven't been part of that process. So right, not. because it was before you came on. <laughs> no. I don't think it was that far. Right. But, um, but I can follow up again on that. Okay. So, look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion. Seeing none. How do you vote? Aye. Uh, Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? Motion carries. Thank you all. Yeah. Yes. Before 10.